excited so today we have a dual topper stock okay to guide you all about the civil servant services journey how they aspire to do it what the strategy was in everything so there are two people rank 41 mr shubham and rank 46 mr manan मिस्टर शुभम इज अ नेटिव ऑफ मधुबनी बिहार तो मधुबनी पेंटिंग पढ़ लेना सब अब शुभम इज अ कंप्यूटर साइंस ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम हंसराज कॉलेज डी यू ही क्वालिफाइड ऑल द स्टेजेस ऑफ यूपीएससी सिविल सर्विसेज एग्जामिनेशन एंड मेड इट टू द फाइनल लिस्ट इन हिज वेरी फर्स्ट अटेम्प्ट हिज ऑप्शनल वॉज जोग्राफी so you can ask your doubts accordingly and his per first preference for services is ifs coming to rank 46 mr manan i'm very pleased to introduce him to you as he is a classroom student also who has grabbed the rank of 46 mr manan has completed his btech btech in Chem chemical engineering from iit bombay during his graduation Manan was awarded the Institute Academic Excellence Award for two successive years. He is also a recipient of prestigious S N Bose Scholarship of Indian Government to undertake summer internship in University of Michigan. Manan was a board topper in twelfth with with ninety nine percent marks and ninety seven point six percent marks in tenth standard. He also received National Talent Search Exam Scholarship in Class Eight, and rest of the things will be shared by Manan himself. So let's have a huge round of applause for both our toppers. So Manan will uh, share his journey with you first, then Shubham will uh, talk to you guys, and then we'll, we will have a Q and A session with both of them together. Okay, so. Uh, Whenever you have a query, please raise your hand and don't speak until unless a mic is passed on to you. Because the question record nahi hota and becomes uh, difficult for us to maintain the data. And also, you don't uh, your question don't go to the online students. Okay, so please raise your hands. So let's welcome Manan. So uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. First of all. Um, uh my sincere thanks to the team at vision ies for inviting me here and giving me this opportunity to interact with you all so i would just uh, introduce you uh, with my journey so far uh, in the civil services examination so it was nearly 4 uh, years ago on uh, 11th june 2019 that i started the foundation program at uh, vision ies and this photo of mine that you see here is actually 4 years ago and so this was how the before of my journey gave my uh, first attempt at the exam in 2020 itself right after graduation fortunately i could reach till the interview stage appeared in the interview but uh, could not make to the final list i was uh, not recommended then subsequently i gave the second attempt in 2021 but as it turned out i could not even clear the first stage i could clear the prelims then uh, it was undoubtedly a setback that having appeared in the interview once and not clearing prelims in the second stage and the third and my third attempt i could uh, secure this rank so uh, today in this uh, talk i would structure it in the same way as there is the examination uh, first of all uh, we can discuss about the prelims then uh, mains and then finally a word about interview Uh, before that uh, if you could just tell me uh, which exam are you uh, 
aiming at? Are you for the 2024 attempt or is there someone who is giving mains this year as well? No. I think one is for uh, the next year cycle. Okay, fine. Then uh, I will include a word on uh, mental health as well because in my journey, I believe uh, that has played a very important role and that is, I think, important for... So, so some a word on mental health also because I think that is important for every aspirant and it has played a key role uh, in my journey as well. Now, I would include things that I believe I did differently or I learned throughout my journey. I would not include things that are already available uh, from other toppers like a book list, etc. These are uh, stuff that you can refer there, but I would in include things that I think I did uh, differently. So, uh, first of all, let's start uh, with the prelims. Here is a uh, table which has my prelims marks so that you can uh, get an idea of uh, how I fared. In my first attempt, I could score roughly around uh, 109 in GS, whereas the uh, cutoff was 92, so it was uh, safe. But in the second attempt, uh, as you can see, uh, my score dipped and it dipped below the cutoff about uh, one and a half mark or so. But in the third attempt, I could uh, recover and there's almost uh, an increase of 40 marks from 86 to 126 in GS. Uh, CSAT was, uh, was safe for me uh, throughout. So this gives me uh, whether I am capable uh, or So in that sense, I, I thought of including these, uh, these marks. So let's uh, straight, come, straight away come to the prelims uh, strategy. So we all have this um, tension or this fear among us before giving prelims that uh, clear it or not why who are the people who uh, who don't go through successfully i mean everyone is studying the same books same material giving the same tests but why is it that some of us clear it while others uh, fail so i analyzed my failure in the second attempt uh, when i could not clear the prelims the first thing that uh, that I could recall was that there was a lack of revision on my part so while in my first attempt, I had revised the entire syllabus about five or six times. But in the second one, it was barely two times. And the third, uh, third revision was hardly uh, just looking through the important topics. So two and a half iterations of the syllabus. Now, second important factor in your prelims uh, strategy should be the number of tests um, that we should give. So while in the first attempt, and as well as in the third attempt, I could attempt roughly around 45 tests. That includes uh, both sectional and full length test. But in the second attempt, I gave only 10 to 15 uh, full length tests. That's it. So you can see that even though I had cleared prelims in the first attempt, still it doesn't matter that it doesn't guarantee that you will clear it in the second attempt as well. We have to do the hard work close to the exam as well. So we cannot rely on our own, our past hard work to bear later on as well. So now these uh, two things, lack of revision and lack of sufficient tests, that resulted into lack of confidence on the D-Day. So I have also uh, seen this among few of my friends. For example, on the, on the exam day, we have to be very confident when we face prelims. Our confidence should be like, if I don't know anything, then I don't know But confidence comes from revision as well as practice. If we don't have these two, then we cannot fake that confidence. So there was also this third factor that is lack of confidence. And I remember even during when I was solving the prelims paper, I was still thinking that if this question was wrong, then maybe I would So I think that doubt that is very, uh, can be fatal for any aspirant. Now this, uh, I have included this third thing as well, this uh, last line. So that was about, so my interview uh, in the first attempt was on 23rd of August. The result of first uh, attempt came of September. And the th second prelims was on 10th of October. So I might go into that uh, that trap of thinking that since everything was happening so close by, maybe that could have been a reason for me to create But uh, I don't think that was true. It was the above factors that actually led into uh, my failure. So that can happen with uh, every aspirant. We can blame other factors instead of blaming our own preparation throughout the journey. We can blame uh, the commission also that no, this time they have set a mains paper which is not relevant to the syllabus or even for the prelims. Uh, but I don't think that is the right way to approach and I could have included these factors on the top and 
could have easily escaped but uh, that is that was not the correct way to go about it that's that's the reason why i could improve in my third attempt as well uh, third prelims so uh, now comes the crux that what did i do in when i was appearing in the third prelims that could help me improve my score so uh, first of all as i uh, talked about confidence and attitude so your uh, attitude when you approach the prelims paper it should be the killing attitude the fighting spirit that no matter what question they ask a uh, concept testing i will approach it with an open mind i will absorb the content which is there in the question and try to find out an answer uh, my approach will not be an escapist that no i don't know this so i will go to the next question go to the next question so because almost all of the aspirants who clear this exam no only about 20 to 30 of questions remaining is almost uh, a, a strong uh, factor of logic and guess work so you will apply only when you have that fighting attitude i think uh, that is very important the ability to solve the unknown so uh, now we come to the second factor which is about diligence so when you are uh, about 2 to 2 and a half months before the prelims you would be focusing entirely on prelims that is the time when you should not worry about mains you should devote your full uh, focus on prelims and what would you be doing in that time you would be solving test papers and pyqs now it is important that each and every test uh, that you solve for the prelims you go through an analysis of that test now what do we mean by analysis analyze suppose out of 100 questions you have attempted 85 fine now in those 85 you would be doing multiple iterations for example um, in the first iteration you would attempt some 45 the questions that you know for sure then you would be attempting another 20 questions uh, which you have some idea of and let's say the last 20 is the ones you have making guess work uh, some wild guesses so you should analyze the accuracy that you are getting in each of these three bunches out of these 45 the first iteration how many are, are you getting correct now these are the questions which you know that you know it in the exam completely but still you may get some 10% let's say four or five of them wrong similarly in the second iteration and in the third iteration so bunch these entire iterations you can track the accuracy of the number of questions you are getting correct and wrong in these and as you give more and more tests let's say you give total 30 tests so right from the first test to the 30th test you can track that okay let's say in the first uh, test i attempted 45 in the first iteration and i got 20% of them wrong but as you proceed with your revision and more tests it is expected that you would improve on your accuracy this would help you analyze whether you are going in the correct direction or not whether the questions which you think you know uh, you know completely in the exam are you getting them right or not it is very important because these form the basic foundation of your prelim score out of these 45 let's say if you get 42 43 correct it means you have already have a score of 80, 80 or 82 in your final uh, aggregate and then you can improve from there on the based on the remaining uh, guess guess work that you do so this kind of diligence now let's say you attempted 85 what about the remaining 15 in my third attempt i introduced uh, this new aspect in my uh, test papers attempt uh, based on a friend's recommendation that of the remaining 15 you attempt even those 15 after you complete the test what happens is that when we are attempting the test we are always worried about negative marking so our logic suffers we are not sure of hoga ki nahi hoga sahi hoga ki nahi hoga ye ye question so hum usko generally chhod dete hain we we think ki let's uh, let's uh, skip this question and we will move to the next so after you have completed the test approach those questions which you have unanswered and try to think that which option you would have marked if you had attempted it so let's say in those remaining 15 questions even if you get 5 or let's say 4 correct and remaining uh, 11 wrong you would still have a plus 0.7 or you can do the calculation but you would still have a positive number even if you get 4 correct and 11 wrong basically we we need only 25% accuracy in our total attempt to uh, to avoid any negative mark in that chunk so this would have two benefits first of all it would improve your logical ability that when you are exposed to those 15 difficult questions you would improve your logic that okay if i think this way i will get the question right or not and second you would also trust yourself more that no i can make guess work properly because even if out of those 15 i got four correct and still i am having at least plus 0.7 and you can see from my second attempt the importance of every mark 
I missed the cutoff by 1.3 marks, and that made me uh, suffer for another entire year. Uh, I went moved to the third attempt immediately. So you have to fight for that every 0.7 mark in prelims through these uh, nuances or through these strategies. So this was about uh, diligence. Now uh, PYQs. Whenever you approach uh, the previous year question bank, one thing is that you go iterate, go sequentially and solve them. Another, after this is fine. After doing this, you, what you can do is you can analyze the themes from which UPSC is asking questions, and this is very important in uh, su in every subject, but subjects like modern history or in geography, they are almost asking questions from climate or regions in news or let's say in history there are of freedom movement of important events. So you analyze these themes and try to prepare these themes holistically that what more they can ask next year. So this kind of analysis can help you when you are uh, after this, when you go back to your notes, you will immediately have in your mind that, okay, these parts of the notes are being asked more in the PYQs. So PYQs is not just answering, just answering one uh, question sequentially, uh, seeing that, okay, I got this right, this wrong, and then uh, going away with it. It's more about doing an iteration of those PYQs, process it in your mind, which are the important themes are being covered. And then automatically when you read your notes again, you will be more attentive to those important areas where UPSC is asking uh, frequently. So next comes the number of revisions. As I said, uh, it all depends on you. It's a personal aspect that it, how many number of revisions you require, but always focus on the accuracy, which I mentioned earlier of accuracy of attempting uh, the questions in the test. I can uh, tell you very uh, with a full conviction that once you improve your revisions, once you go from two revisions to third, fourth, fifth revision, you will automatically have a very high accuracy uh, in your tests. For example, uh, initially you would have a 75-80% accuracy, later you would have the 90-95% accuracy because you would know very clearly which are the aspects I know and which I don't know. So this would and this accuracy can help you reduce negative mark, can improve your confidence during the exam, and also, of course, increase your uh, marks in the paper. So this is about a uh, number of revisions. So accuracy tracker is the uh, same thing that we discussed earlier. And number of tests. So while I have given a number that which I solved, about 30 uh, full length tests and 15 sectional in my third attempt, there is also an importance of the All India tests. What I have seen is, that your percentile in the All India test, whichever uh, test you give, that remains nearly constant. Uh, by percentile, I mean the number of uh, students, the percentage of students who scored above you or who scored below you. So it is important to track that percentile as well. So if you are among the top 1%, 2%, or in whatever fraction, then you can be sure that, okay, I'm clearing this prelims. So always strive to be to improve on this All India test because they give you a very good number of uh, of give you a good handle on your ranking on what your current preparation is and then similarly you can uh, improve your uh, preparation from there on. Another thing that I did uh, was because I was very bad at ma maps uh, in my first attempt I had um, hardly seen the atlas uh, by then because I thought that okay let's I would. Uh, just focus on the GS, whatever theory is there, I would not go the extra grind of going through the atlas and going through the different rivers, cities, etc. But in the second prelims, they had asked, there were quite a few questions from map based activities. And that was a warning bell for me. So after that, I used to look 10 to 15 minutes at the atlas, whichever continent you like, whichever country you like, just have a look. Of course, you would start with India, uh, you would have a look at the rivers, the mountain peaks, uh, etc., the coast, the cities, it would improve you tremendously. You would have a better grasp at history. For example, there was a question I remember on uh, the city of Hampi and whether it is placed on the Tungabhadra River or not. That was a PYQ. And based on this simple fact, you could eliminate the options and get the uh, question wrong. However, the elimination technique is itself eliminated now. So uh, that, that remains a previous year question and not uh, relevant still. But that is the idea that even small facts from the atlas can help you in other subjects as well, uh, history or geography or whatever uh, areas you are studying. So I used to uh, glance at the atlas for 10-15 minutes, make a mark on the uh, on the cities which I think was important, and then it actually helped in the uh, 2022 attempt as well. I remember a question, and I think that was on the the peaks that are there in the Himalayas, Namcha Barwa or something, 
and I could arrive at the correct answer simply because I had marked that uh, in the atlas. So that is, this was the broad areas which I think I had did differently uh, in the third attempt. Remaining the books that I had studied or the notes that I was revising, that had remained uh, constant from across the attempts. So yeah, this is uh, a photograph of the map work uh, that I was telling you. So th these are the maps from uh, NCRT. I had taken a printout of that and I remember a question in 2020, I think, which was about whether uh, Devagiri, Dwar Samudra, whether it is located in Maharashtra or Karnataka, something on this. So learning from that question, I decided to take a printout of the map from, geography, uh, from the NCRT on history, I think, and pasting it on my, along with my notes, uh, which are there for uh, the ancient uh, and medieval history. So here I had highlighted the different kingdoms to get, an, get a visual idea that where these kingdoms are located. And similarly in this one also, uh, so when you are, so what, why this is important is that you should not look at maps in isolation. These are actually tools to help you understand your own notes. So keep it along with your notes. It would be a good uh, way if you can if you can paste it along with your notes so that whenever you are reading about uh, the different battles or the different kingdoms, you are having also a look at the, uh, at the places where these were located. So this would make it more interesting, the, the preparation part, as well as you can visualize, okay, Vijayanagar Empire was in the south, the Bahamani Kingdom, the Gajapatis of Odisha. So this would help overall uh, your uh, understanding would improve. So yeah, this is for the uh, Indus Valley civilization. So we have different uh, cities like uh, Chanudaro or Kalibangan and we have some special quality of each city. So there was a question in 2021. Uh, I think it was about Dhola Veera and its uh, irrigation uh, or water system. So it is important that we include this in the map because I think our brain also remembers the visual patterns very well. If we have a table simple and uh, just have those texts, it would be very boring. But if we have a map and along with the map, we can include the different properties of the city. For example, you can see that you have Raki Gadi, which is located somewhere in Haryana and it is also the largest site. So it would uh, have, you would have three or four pointers to each city and you can remember it very easily. Because uh, in my first attempt, I did not know uh, what is the difference between Lothal and Dhola Veera. I thought that even Dhola Veera was uh, a coastal city, but uh, as I later came to know that it was located much inwards while Lothal is on uh, this part. So uh, you never know that you would get much more newer sense of information when you have these kind of maps. And I think UPSC is also testing these uh, different things. They are not testing on conventional knowledge. They are testing your ability to join the dots, to think a bit differently. I think uh, that is there. So this can be one strategy which I uh, wanted to share. Similarly, these are the rivers. So uh, you can know that on the Indus River, these are the cities which are located, Mohenjo-Daro, Ambri, and this is the river Ravi, uh, which, is, which has Harappa located on it. So these are the questions, at least in test series, these are asked. So, uh, so this can help you in that way. Now coming to the, uh, to the demon uh, that was, to the elephant that was unaddressed so far. Uh, that is a CSAT and uh, for those of you who have seen this uh, this year's CSAT paper, it has been quite difficult and I consider myself fortunate that I could clear the exam before uh, this year's prelims uh, because, uh, because those uh, marks that you are seeing here, I can, uh, I'm sure if there had been a fourth column, uh, it would have been uh, not more than 50% of uh, what you see right now. But uh, for those of you who would be appearing in next year uh, in the CSAT, it's time to pull up your socks. Because uh, what I think is that UPSC is not allowing you uh, an easy passage through the CSAT paper. It needs to be given the respect that it is the paper two of uh, the prelims paper, paper one being the GS and paper two being CSAT. So both of them, uh, they need to be focused upon. So that's, you cannot think that you would avoid English, you would only solve maths and uh, that will allow you to sail through the cutoff because maths this year, I, uh, for me, I think it was uh, very difficult. So, so therefore you should need, you need to focus on both maths and English and so that no matter what next year, maybe English would be very difficult. Uh, we never know the 
examination is itself very unpredictable. So you need to be prepared on all topics. Some may be easy, some may be difficult. But I'm sure that they would include enough doable questions that would help you to cut, clear the cutoff. So enough uh, doable questions would be there, but you need to be prepared on all uh, pillars of the syllabus. Any topic that you identify as a weak topic, uh, read the basics, at least the basics from there, so that if there is an easy question, you are uh, doing that correctly. It's not very important to start from, uh, to go into very depth or advanced areas of every topic at the initial stage, at least get a basic grasp of uh, all the topics first, and then you can move into the advanced areas selectively. Now, uh, when the paper is tough, uh, and the paper is having, let's say out of the 80 questions, 40 are among the difficult category, remaining 40 are doable, it is important to find out those 40 doable questions. Because uh, if you get stuck in the 40 difficult questions, uh, you would have a more, uh, you would have lower confidence and uh, that's a waste of time. So don't spend more than 90 seconds on a question because that is what has been allotted. If you are, if you guess that uh, I would take more time, then you would have to take that quick decision whether I have to spend more time on this or I can skip and go to the rest. Because it may happen that in your particular set, the 10 easy questions may be at the last. The 71 to 80 questions might be the easiest. And uh, if you are attempting them at the last five minutes when you are already low on confidence, then uh, it would not do justice to your entire one year of preparation. So it is important that you give every question its due respect and only its uh, due respect. So yes, and uh, previous year papers, uh, of course, remain important for uh, even the CSAT paper. So that was my, so my own strategy was to solve at least two or three years of previous year papers uh, before giving the prelims exam from CSAT point of view. And I was, uh, I did not have any, uh, as such any need to prepare beyond that. But I understand that some of you may need to prepare uh, from, apart from the previous year papers also. So you can, you should attempt the test series to get a hang of the difficult uh, questions as well. So uh, that was about the prelims. So I think at this stage, if you have some doubts uh, from my uh, talk so far about prelims, then I can take up that. However, after uh, Shubham would also be addressing you. And later on, we will also have a combined Q&A session. But if you have any doubt from specifically from what I have uh, discussed so far, then uh, I would be very happy to address them now. Sir, uh, how many pre-oriented uh, months you have given for pre prelims examination? Pre-oriented? Yes, sir. Okay. It was uh, about three months before the prelims. I used to focus uh, entirely on prelims. So let's say if, uh, on 5th June 2022 uh, was the prelims. So about first March, I used to shift to the prelims mode. And before that, I had uh, devoted time to the mains exam. So about two and a half to three months before prelims is, a, is what I did. But you can analyze on your own assessment. Because the key is the number of iterations and the number of tests. I mean the number of revisions and uh, the number of tests. So you can see that, okay, if I am getting, uh, if I can complete those five, six iterations in a shorter time span, then uh, you can devote less time. Hello. So you have done any revision for mains in that part particular time? Uh, see, the 50% of the mains GS is already overlapping, I think, with the prelims. So if you devote more time, I mean, if you devote the time you're devoting to your prelims part of GS, uh, that is already helping you in mains. So apart from that, I did not study anything else uh, for mains during those last two, two and a half months. Sir, how, when, how much time you had given for your optional? Uh, that is a that depends on the time range which you are asking. For example, between prelims and mains, it was 50-50. 50% 50 uh, 50 I had given to optional. Uh, my optional is mathematics, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, it was, uh, it depended, I mean, on GS and maths. So uh, that was there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, anyone else or uh, we can move to the next. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, in a particular year, what would be the chronology of your preparation? Like, what would you do first and later? How would you go about it? Uh, from GS. GS and optional and everything. Okay. So, um, let's say you have the prelims in June of any year. So, if you go reverse, if you go in the reverse direction, then from three months before the prelims, you would mo mostly I would focus on uh, the prelims itself, and 
nine months before the uh, nine months before that period, I would from let's say from March to the previous year's June. In those nine months, I would devote between GS of mains and uh, my optional 50-50. So that's how it would be. I would try to finish my optional even before I start dedicated preparation of prelims. So that's the ideal way. Uh, you should not read anything new generally between prelims and mains. That was uh, my experience. Uh, that between prelims and mains, if we focus more on revision and test, then it w helps us a lot uh, because we can practice answer writing and practice test series of uh, optional and that can improve our score like anything. Uh, and sir, if you were to give uh, this last prelims, mm -hmm. uh, would you uh, do some changes in your strategy? In my or prelims strategy? Yes, sir. Uh, I would be happy even if I would be able to replicate all that I could do in my third prelims. So I would have done, uh, I would not have introduced anything new in this year's prelims, even if I could uh, again, do all this that I did earlier. It would be I would be very happy to do that. So, so that was how. I hope I answered your question. Uh, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are you asking for the mains as well, or? Sir, uh, I'm asking about last prelims. About the third prelims. No, not your prelims. Uh -huh. The one which you didn't give. Okay. No. Uh, see, I understand that I would not have done anything different from what I did in the third prelims already I had scored well so basic idea would be to focus more on revision and tests so because see my interview was also on 11th May so 11th May was the interview and 28th May was the prelims so I was balancing preparation between prelims and interview so it was in itself a difficult task that to do all the iterations of syllabus from prelims point of view to solve the tests so it was and also study for the interview Sir, what were your strengths? <laughs> Even I'm, uh, I'm struggling to find my strengths. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, surrounded more by weaknesses than strengths, and I think by focusing more on weaknesses, I am able to improve. But uh, that's how <laughs> it is. But how you managed to appear in the interview in your first attempt itself? Even that's a mystery to me, because <laughs> uh, because uh, I'll. I'll tell you because I barely scraped through. So I had only 20 marks above the mains cutoff. Mains cutoff was 736, I, I remember, and I was 756. I had scored 284 in maths. Three th I, we have. We will move to that later. So I have that in my uh, in my this slides. So I think we can uh, go ahead now. Sir, is that because you are from IIT Bombay? Uh, which part? You cleared it in first attempt. I also have that here. I will I will tell you about uh, that as well. So, <laughs> so yeah. So this is about uh, current affairs. So uh, we are al almost uh, we have a lot of information around us that which current affairs magazine to read, what to f uh, follow in the current current affairs part. My strategy was simple. To I picked up the Indian Express newspaper. I remember June 2019 was when I started, and uh, reading the e-paper daily. So that was the single newspaper I read. And apart from that, from prelims point of view, there are a lot, there are some factual questions that we need to cope up with. So PT 365 uh, was a good source for me. And I tried to do three or four revisions. I used to mark on the printout and uh, used to revise it three or four times before the prelims. As far as mains 365 is concerned, I mean, uh, current affairs for mains, it was, see, the current events remain the same that we study for prelims and mains. The, the basic idea for mains is that we have to be more analytical. We have to look at the pros and cons, the causes and effects. So I used to just look at the index of uh, mains 365 and see what I what I had not read earlier, and that would that used to help me. I have uh, I'm sorry I forgot writing the monthly current affairs magazine. So that was the basic monthly current affairs and the newspapers that used to form the basic crux. And if I had missed out anything from the monthly magazines, then I would just look at the index of mains 365 and include it within my short notes. Also, uh, test series help you a lot in this respect, both for prelims and mains. There, there will be topics that you find in the, in the test series which you would have not read uh, somewhere else. So you can just Google these topics. You can look at the solutions in the test series and try to look at what are the uh, different areas where you can find information. You can look at the Wikipedia page, see if there is an organization. You can just see the first paragraph from the Wikipedia page to get an idea that, OK, what are the things that I should know about?
yeah so uh, now coming to your question of how i cleared the first uh, mains and uh, all that what happened in the first attempt and how the third attempt was different so in my uh, i have written two mains as you would have seen second prelims i could not clear so in my first mains these are the marks the the basic crux is in the next slide it is that in the essay my marks reduced from 137 to 101 so you would know that i am not a very good person to advise you on essay so i think uh, shubham can handle both handle that better and uh, as far as gs is concerned i improved from 333 uh, in 2020 to 409 this year uh, maths uh, is there anyone who is from maths option I think people have already started leaving maths optional by now, so, but still, so I would, uh, I would still answer your questions if you have any specific questions from maths, but, uh, and there's this interview as well, so, I had scored uh, 157 in the first interview and it increased to 193 this year, so I would share what I feel went well this year, but interview is again there is a lot of uh, unpredictability about it, uh, there's also a factor of luck which goes there because. how you answer how they perceive your answer there is those factors also cannot be denied but based on my perception what i did differently this in this interview i would uh, share those aspects so now comes the the crux of my improvement i had uh, i think improved about 60 76 marks uh, in the gs aggregate from first mains to second mains so i would like to share uh, what things i did differently it is not just because i have performed well in this mains actually i have performed very badly in the first mains so that's why you can you would see that delta very higher that plus 76 but actually it is mostly majorly because my score in first mains itself was below much below average 333 is like uh, you don't study and still i think you can get that get those marks uh, so i'm still wondering what i was doing in the first attempt but uh, still i would i would like to share what i did what how i improved uh, in the in the second mains for gs so i also have my answer copies later on so you can uh, you will ha can have a look on those as well but my broad idea was that earlier i used to have the the chalta hai attitude ki theek hai ek 10 marker question hai usme do parts puche hain so i will write four uh, points in one four points in this next sub part and uh, i'll write a somehow conclusion and let's get done with it we only have seven minutes for the paper so why waste so much time and so much brain on every answer somehow i will scrape through by scoring average uh, marks so that was my earlier uh, attitude but that thing changed in the second mains when i got my copies reviewed from people who had cleared earlier they said that you are writing very less uh, you have to so i needed to include more points in my answers there is no fixed number but my target was for every 10 marker in each sub part i used to write 6 or 7 points uh, for each part so that should make it around 11 12 Uh, points in total now uh, when you start reading the question you have actually started answering the answer the moment you read the first word of the question the answer starts building in your mind and you you are not starting when you are you write the first word it is when you read the first word of the question so it is important that the time that you spend uh, reading the question you utilize it to encircle the keyword for example there is evaluate elucidate illustrate all those keywords so you try to uh, encircle them you also identify the sub parts which are there in every question uh, are there two sub parts three sub parts and how should i uh, break my answer so that starts right from the uh, from reading the question earlier my approach was that i used to ignore the first sentence in the question generally upsc says a statement first and then ask you the question i used to ignore that first statement kyunki question to second wala na first to unhone shayad aise hi de diya hoga kyunki unhe dikhana hai that they have this uh, idea but uh, every word in your question paper is important even the instructions and all so th that first statement is important in that context you have to answer the question so maybe it will help you in introduction maybe you can use that to conclude your answer better so uh, that is about reading the question also introduction and conclusion have to be very precise see if the examiner gets distracted by your lengthy introduction or which is off the point he or she may not even read your answer so that introduction and conclu and conclusion is important because that is the moment when uh, the time is about to uh, the time is to give marks and nothing can be more important uh, than those uh, marks for you so 
introduction and conclusion have to be important they have they have to be crisp because you can't waste your words and the examiner's time in uh, in irrelevant information in the introduction so i i had an idea that okay i will write some definition in the these are all basic things but i had not done this in the first mains i was a bit lethargic in my preparation but that led to uh, my low score so if any of you are into that i don't want any of you to comp to again do that mistake that even if we write average introduction we may get some average marks because the competition is very intense in gs so you have to make your copy stand out so now uh, we can discuss some paper wise uh, gs strategy for gs1 it's about history and uh, the history part and the geography part are already covered from the prelims some at least the most of the major static part is there from the prelims base so that is why when you are studying for for prelims uh, the three months before prelims do it very diligently and have the idea that after clearing prelims you have to give the mains so never ignore the mains aspect for example let's say there is the quit india movement now when we are studying for prelims we would remember the dates the important personalities and all that but along with that also try to memorize the causes the effects of quit india movement because anyways your target is to clear prelims mains and interview all these stages so you you must have complete information for that you don't need to uh, you should not need to uh, come back to quit india movement after prelims to read it from mains perspective that would not be a, an optimal utilization of your time so that is how you should go about studying the prelims as, as well keep the mains always in your mind second uh, it's about gs i mean all the gs papers are about making your copy copy stand out the answer copy now when you have some diagrams included in it uh, for example i remember uh, shubham kumar sir's uh, topper stock who was uh, rank 1 of cse 2020 in which he had shown a lot of diagrams which he used to include in his uh, copies and this, it is also there in his toppers copy for example diagrams of stupa diagrams of the morian pillar so when you include these even small small diagrams they can fetch you those extra half mark extra one mark and believe me it will add up to another 10 or 12 marks in the entire gs paper and across all the gs papers it would have 40 45 marks extra so just those incremental improvement because basic knowledge everyone would have the same that difference between uh, whatever stupas and i mean pre buddhist or what uh, these stupas so basic knowledge would be same with everyone but you have to add those incremental uh, diagrams or somehow you have to make your copy stand out uh, for society i was uh, since i was a student of uh, vision foundation program so smriti ma'am's uh, notes was what what i used and they are already uh, very good for geography uh, again if you analyze the previous year questions you would see that most of the themes are getting repeated for example on water there is almost uh, somehow water climate change or there are questions on uh, cryosphere so you would again identify that okay these themes are being asked in one way or the other so try to identify these themes prepare them holistically holistically but mean i mean have some data on this for example there is a data that india's what per capita water availability is let's say 1400 cubic uh, meters per year so and projected to be 1100 cubic meter per year by this year so you can say that india is a water stressed country based on this data so that data will help you in immense ways in gs1 gs2 and even in gs3 the environment uh, section so somehow you have to prepare these themes along with data what are the causes of water shortage how can we improve them what are the government schemes and uh, what is the way forward so this is the way to analyze pyqs just as we had done for the prelims we had uh, just uh, identified the important terms they are asking and using the wikipedia or google similarly for mains we will have these themes and we will prepare them from mains point of view the different uh, pros and cons etc uh, coming from uh, to gs2 and gs3 so these are very close i think uh, papers both are having heavy influence of current affairs some specifics of gs2 are that committees and supreme court judgments become important committees are also important in economy and environment uh, part of uh, secure of gs3 also elections and uh, the rpa these are getting repeated i had ident identified that these are getting repeated over the years so you can have a look that how electoral disputes are solved or let's say there's the issue of anti defection law so you would identify these themes from the test series uh, the test series and the index of the main 365 
there would be some or the other question from whichever test series you are solving on let's say anti defection law or on the office of governor so you can look at the solutions in the test series what for example the 52nd constitutional amendment act 1985 it introduced the anti defection law so if you have this in your introduction automatically you would be above at least 50% of the main copies next uh, you can you can start with an introduction like defection leads to uh, it weakens the bedrock of democracy you can have it somewhere in the conclusion or you can have some other data that let's say 50% of the defected candidates they get reelected there's a data sim somehow some somewhat related to this uh, from prs so if you have these kind of uh, strong points in your answers it will have a have an outstanding impact on uh, your your answer so you have to identify these themes be it from the test series be it from the uh, main series 65 or uh, your own notes of the current affairs and prepare them from every direction that you can think of include the statistics or data that i said uh, regarding whatever theme you are preparing and don't you don't need to uh, do too much research on this look at the test series they would have their own solutions and in their solutions they would include more than enough data more than enough way forwards on this so make use of those test series solutions and include it in your notes you don't have to get the most authentic information from the actual pdf of the committee it would be a waste of time when the coachings are already doing it for you so just make use of that and uh, and keep building your short notes now i would come to gs4 this was the paper where i think i made the maximum improvement from 86 to 107 so there was an increase of 21 marks in this paper and this and i would like to share some of the strategies which i had compiled from uh, different topics and i think that would be very helpful for you all as well now in uh, ethics paper so far there are two sections uh, the theory and the case studies why i say so far because uh, as you see the prelims paper i think is just a trailer the unpredictability which we have seen in this uh, year's prelims it might even be replicated in the mains this year so uh, you can't keep sticking to the old pattern again and again they i am sure there would be much more surprises uh, that await us in the mains exam as well but so far there are theory and case studies for theory examples are very important every point that you write you don't have to be a philosopher or a uh, very good at giving those knowledge it is about implementing them in real life so when you give examples from real life of a civil servant who has shown leadership skills who has shown integrity who has or someone even negative example someone uh, who is alleged of corruption so these examples can help you substantiate your point better and further since the competition is very tough don't rely on the repeated examples which are doing the rounds for two or three years because the examiners are already familiar with them instead you can uh, form your own examples from newspapers and this is an area which is worth investing your time in the ethics as uh, paper and especially the examples part because whenever the examiner reads a fresh example he would automatically get a very positive uh, view about you that you have done the hard work of identifying these examples and trust me there are not a, a very large number of examples you need to remember each example can be used in multiple areas so uh, once you get a once you get an idea of where i can use this and that then uh, it would it would not be very difficult now uh, as every i mean a lot of toppers advice about preparing a term uh, preparing a table of terms for ethics uh, you should have uh, all the list of the qualities like leadership integrity or openness etc what is the crisp definition for that uh, for that quality what personal life example civil servant example similarly you can have those that table it also helps you revise uh, very quickly because uh, see uh, i know your mains would be about 15 months from now but still you should have that idea that the main schedule is that on friday you have the essay paper the next saturday it is gs1 gs2 and on sunday you have gs3 gs4 so after saturday uh, when you return from your G writing 6 hours of gs uh, and you have to write again 6 hours next day i am sure if you invest your those precious 2 or 3 hours of revision that you have on gs4 especially these terms and tables they will have a very high uh, return on investment of your time because the ethics syllabus is not very vast the terms they get repeated in one way or the other i uh, if you would have seen this year's paper the paper was very lengthy they had given a lot of a very uh, large number of uh, large size of questions 
but the basic idea will be the same they have to ask from the syllabus only so if you have these tables prepared and they, they are uh, imprinted in your mind your recall time would be very low in the exam and you would write much better answers the third aspect is about being broad and multi dimensional so in theory everyone knows the definition everyone knows uh, where leadership can be applied if you can be innovative about this or if you can apply it some other dimension some uh, aspect where you feel no one else can think of so you have to always uh, keep pushing your boundaries for example let's say leadership in united nations or give an international example from uh, any other from any news that you have read so that would add an extra value to your answer so always try to be broad and multi dimensional the pestel approach i think still works uh, you can use the political economic social technological aspects to think of these examples and always be broad in your thinking don't just uh, stick to the to the aspect of the conventional aspects now comes the case studies and i think these are the most logical uh, part of the paper and this is the one area where as much you practice you would get much more benefit from that uh, because case studies is something where you are given everything that every one of you know it is already given in the question paper you don't have to uh, remember or recall something from from any textbook that you have studied or something theory is something that you have to memorize but in uh, case studies it all about it is all about application based on what is presented before you in the paper so it is uh, it has a high degree of logic now you are asked that have you have any one of you studied ethics by the way so far i think you would have been uh, starting your preparation you don't okay fine i would just uh, quickly go through this so there is you are asked you are given a situation in ethics that what would you do in a situation and uh, then they ask you why do you choose that particular uh, choice so what is important is not the choice but the logic that you use behind making that choice and to build a strong logic you need to you know the ethics syllabus well that okay i have to i am expected to be to have integrity to have selflessness these are the qualities expected of a civil servant so as a civil servant i would make decisions based on these aspects so you have to justify your decision well and that is the logic part of it also you are uh, given your when you have to state your course of action you can use the short term medium term long term approach that in the short for example if there is a riot in your district so uh, you can use the idea that first of all i would prevent the riot i would use section 144 i would uh, deploy drones etc then in the medium term i would try to build peace and in the long term i would ensure that such situations do not recur in the future so have this long term approach always in your mind we tend to focus on the short term and the medium term that was uh, what i did in my first attempt as well i did not have the long term view always so uh, that is something which can be uh, included in the answers as well now another thing is that this year the case studies were very repetitive uh, i mean i think they were asking almost similar things in the in the three or four case study there are by the way six case studies uh, in the paper and uh, this year three or four had quite a similar idea so when you include your answers i mean when you write your answers they should not sound repetitive even if the questions are repetitive so it is the onus is on you to make it interesting for the examiner to read otherwise you would have to contend with average marks so therefore i have something which i had prepared to avoid repeti repetition in case studies this is a list of the values that uh, you are used to uh, you are expected to make use of when you are making decisions so i had a list of these nine values and in a question you can in a particular case study you can include one or two uh, not more than that and therefore you would have enough fodder to write unique answers for eight or nine, for uh, three or four questions similarly you would have to say that because i faced crisis of conscience i would not take this decision so you cannot repeat crisis of conscience for every answer you can also use other terms like it would have been betrayal of public trust or it would have been dereliction of duty if i had taken this decision so in this way basically you are saying the same thing but since you are giving new terms it makes your copy stand out from other uh, aspirant other uh, candidates so i had prepared this table and i had taken a print out and pasted it on my uh, study rooms wall so about from about 15 days before the mains paper i used to have a look at these tables every day uh, every uh, night before i went to sleep for it won't take more than 10 12 minutes and this got imprinted in my mind for 
since I did it for 10, 12 days re repeatedly, just leading up to the GS paper. So uh, in the exam hall, I was able to very quickly recall these qualities. And even though the questions were almost similar in nature, yet I could give at least some different terms for each case study. So this is the list of ethical terms. So those of you who would have read the GS4 syllabus, they have uh, some of these terms. But you are expected to also know some of the other terms. So you can make a list of this, uh, these terms, whichever unique terms that you think are important and uh, try to go through them every time. There are, similarly, this is, a, uh, this is a slide on what are the approaches that you would use when you are making a decision. So my idea is that have these ready-made material. You cannot rely on uh, your on-the-spot thinking when you're writing in the exam. Because you have 15 minutes to solve a case study, about four minutes go in reading the case study twice. And the case study's length is increasing like uh, almost like the inflation in the country. So, uh, so therefore, only you have 10 or 11 minutes to answer the, uh, to write the answer. And in those 10, 11 minutes, you have to write 250 words. So you would know that in GS paper also, we have only 11 minutes to write 250 words. And when we don't have to think as much, but in ethics, we also have to think on the spot. We don't have any uh, recall. So therefore, you will have to uh, have such ready-made material that you can easily recall in the exam so that you are always writing in the paper, not stopping to think and then write. Similarly, on uh, there are questions on corporate governance. You can have multiple terms like people, uh, profit planet or compassionate capitalism so as to convince the examiner that yes, I have studied something. I'm not uh, just, an, just an any other candidate. So I'll just, uh, since you, do, you are not very exposed to GS4, I think, so I'll, so this is just the idea that whenever you read ethics in, in your later uh, preparation journey, have these ready-made material in hand. And based on your notes, based on whatever uh, questions you find important in the test series, you make these material, you uh, regularly revise them and reduce your recall time in the exam. Similarly, if there is a question on police, so I would have these uh, committees at hand, the Prakash Singh case reforms, if anyone would have you had heard, it can be used in conclusion. And these are the four aspects uh, which you can use to control law and order. So these are almost, they can be fi uh, these can be copied and pasted. But remember that there has to be some uniqueness in your answers as well. So try to uh, play around with things. You can use the test series solutions to add something new. But uh, the uh, basic idea is that always have these ready-made material. Similarly, if there is a question on tribals. Now, uh, when you would read further, there would you would understand that we have something like the District Mineral uh, Foundation funds, or there is the PESA Act, which we can implement better to protect the tribal interests. So these are the aspects which you have ready-made in your mind, and you can utilize them in the paper. Similarly, for disaster management. So these are the uh, uh, pictures of a previous year's uh, topper, Divya Mishra ma'am. And she, I think, had scored highest in her ethics paper that year. So she really writes uh, beautifully. I'm, I will highly recommend you to go through her uh, topper copies uh, from wherever you find. And you will learn a lot from just from reading her copies. And I also included a lot from her uh, strategy, the way to uh, write stakeholders and issues. The, For example, this pie chart. and. You can see how uh, innovative and fresh it looks. So this would be a good way to go about. Similarly, uh, there's another example. You can, uh, whenever you are approaching the case studies, you can give an idea of what your overall approach is uh, based on this idea that my vision, and you can just give a two or three line, two or three words in front of that. So this was this is one of my test copies from uh, 2020. I'm sure some uh, most of you would be beginning to write answers uh, at this stage. And uh, at this stage, it would be very helpful if you know that what are the mistakes that I did earlier that I don't want you to repeat in your uh, mains exam. So as I said, I used to write only uh, three or four points. I hope you can see the answers. So a TED marker and four sub points, four points for every sub part. And that's how it went. It was a very casual way of writing answers. I thought that I have addressed the aspects, so I should get good marks. But in the exam, if you don't differentiate your copy, then 
you, you don't differentiate your marks either. Similarly, this is a 15 marker, and it, it had five and five, uh, 10 points, a conclusion and introduction. So I was happy when I was writing these answers in the test. I thought I had included introduction, body, conclusion. I have given the points. But there is no data in this answer. The uh, conclusion is very lengthy. It is not uh, to, the, to the point. And I don't think even it is uh, suggestive or any uh, future orientation is there. So, so and look at the handwriting. I think uh, it is the most uh, beautiful way I have ever written. So, so I used to feel that if I can write so beautifully in the exam, and I used to look at topper's copies, they are writing so, uh, I mean, it is not as good. So I thought that I should get even better marks, because handwriting is one of our concerns when we start answer writing. But uh, you have seen already uh, my marks, and uh, I don't think I don't have anything to say about that. So this is a 2022 test copy. First of all, notice the handwriting. It is, uh, it is barely legible. Now, what is the reason for this? Earlier, I had almost enough time because I was writing just four points, writing only those points which came to my mind immediately, not thinking further. So I had a, lo a sufficient amount of time at hand because I was not writing enough. So I could use the time to write it really well and finish the paper. I finished it, I remember one paper I finished it before five minutes uh, in, the, in the first attempt. And one of my friends who said that this paper was very lengthy, I said, no, my paper was finished in so I thought it was possible that I had more marks, but it didn't happen. So, so it is important that you you need to push your boundaries. So when when you once you start writing large number of points, I am not saying that you have to fill all the pages or that, but still you should I think give sufficient dimensions, five or six points, so that the examiner knows that you have the depth of knowledge. You are not just writing superficially. And anyways, these are my perspective. You have to apply your own brain, your own analysis of different toppers to know that whether you have to use this strategy or not. So that is a very important caveat that I should uh, put forward. There is greater use of flowchart. Uh, for example, uh, in this, uh, if you can see, I had tried to include something in the, uh, the flowchart. And uh, similarly, there are terms like life, lifestyle for environment. So this is a government uh, movement. So you, you need to uh, write these uh, as well. So, similarly, tiny home movement. So, I had included this somewhere, I think it is in Japan or somewhere, but I had included it from reading of newspapers directly in my, yeah, so walk to school approach is from Japan and there was another tiny home movement. So, these were some important, uh, important takeaways from reading the newspaper. I used to include these key aspects directly into my short notes and utilize them in the answer copies. So once you have these differentiating uh, topic, differentiating points, I think uh, that helps you a lot. So that is about this, 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 this. Number of points you can already see, I think it's, here it goes up to nine. So total uh, 14 points were there in this answer for 15 marker. You can write even more if you know about it. Generally, there are three subparts uh, in which I try, try to divide. So for three subparts, you can write five or six for each and go at least till uh, 15, 16. Now another important thing is time tracker. Now once you start answer writing, uh, I'm sure you would have it in your mind that in how much time do I need to write an answer? If you look at the uh, the UPSC pattern so far, and I would again remind you that it can go unpredictable like anything. So, but what we have seen so far is 10, 10 markers and 10, 15 markers. So you have roughly seven minutes for 10 markers and 11 minutes for 15 markers. So when you're attempting the test, you actually don't know that how much time I'm taking for each answer, at least I did not know. So I was really surprised that by the time I reached 15th, 16th question, I was uh, always in a hurry and I could not do justice to what I knew in those questions. So I developed this strategy that I used to write the time at which I'm beginning the answer uh, at, at the bottom of the page. So wherever you find space, you can just look at your watch and write the time. You don't have to calculate anything. You would always, when you go to the next question, you would write, for example, it's, I think 1037 is written here. When you go to the next answer, you would write something like 1045 or whatever. So you would have it in your mind, I'm taking eight minutes if I'm writing this much. If I need to reduce it further, I can cut short a point and I can save one minute. If I have to, if I have time at hand, I can write an extra line or two to increase. So it would provide you effective course correction. Uh, jo hum log, uh, mains mein bhi way forward, 
नीति आयोग की आइडियाज़ यूज़ करके टाइमली कोर्स करेक्शन मिलता है सो सिमिलरली वाइल यू आर राइटिंग योर टेस्ट दिस ट्रैकर वुड हेल्प यू कोर्स करेक्ट वुड प्रिवेंट यू फ्रॉम डिवेटिंग टू मच और टेकिंग टू मच टाइम फॉर एनी वन आंसर एंड लेस टाइम फॉर दी अदर सो दिस इज समथिंग आई यूज इन दिस ईयर अटैम्प some uh, a word on interview but i am sure that your interview is very uh, ahead in time but my understanding was that this year i of course earlier that was my first attempt and by the way if you have any uh, doubt so far this was the end of mains uh, answer writing and mains preparation so of course uh, shubham would also be addressing but if you have any specific thing from what i have uh, shown you so you can ask uh, ask me that hello First of all, congratulations, sir. Sir, what were the sources which you particularly referred for the major majority of the subjects, just like geography, history, and uh, economy, and the other subjects? Like you are the classroom student of Vision IE, so what was the significance of class notes? Vision material as well. Okay. Yeah, so that's a relevant question. Firstly, uh, for economics, I would say that. Uh, the class notes of vision were of very high quality the lecture notes so i did not refer to anything apart from the class notes for economics for polity again about 80 90% was from class notes rest was from uh, lakshmikant and uh, history again class notes plus some glance at spectrum initially in first attempt i had some time i also read uh, modern indian this uh, bipin chandra's thick book but read it only once all those important aspects which had been covered which had not been covered in class i included it in my class notes itself so basic chunk was from class notes 80 90% only here and there whatever from the test series from current affairs uh, or from uh, these additional books that are usually recommended you can just pick up the additional points and include it in your class notes itself don't uh, shift from because you have invested a lot of time in uh, preparing these notes so don't let that time go waste include all these additional material just the important points in your class notes so one more thing how do you manage all the things in a single day attending the classes maintaining the class notes arranging them reading them for and reading the for the next day uh, class revising the today's class and then newspaper magazine several other things are also there optional classes and its notes so uh, are you starting your preparation uh, right now i believe no no i have started my preparation but uh, some some of the days i feel like ki something ah. is missed in a single day maybe in newspaper some day it may be a monthly magazine page is uh, what i what i would suggest is let's say you have 10 hours uh, on a day in the initial phase when you are basically building your foundation from day 1 of your preparation for me it was june 2019 till roughly march or april of 2020 remember the COVID, the prelims was in october 2020 that year because of covid so in the first 9 or 10 months when you are building your foundation your my day was that 3 hours uh, vision class about 3 or 4 hours for maths preparation about 1 1 and a half hour for newspaper reading and remaining time i used so there are also mini tests uh, yes, in yes, yes. Uh, at vision so i used to prepare for let's say uh, 45 minutes of 1 hour for example polity ka initially syllabus khatam ho gaya tha आई रिमेंबर पॉलिटी एंड इकोनॉमी पहले क्लासेस थे पॉलिटी का शायद दो महीने में खत्म हो गया था वंस द सिलेबस वर्स डन जो हो चुका है उसको रिवाइज करता था मैं लास्ट के थर्टी मिनट्स फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स जितना भी हो सकता है एक दिन में तीन क्लास रिवाइज हो जाती नहीं ट्वेंटी मिनट्स पर क्लास एक घंटे में तीन क्लास और अराउंड दस बारह दिन में सारी क्लासेज रिवाइज हो गई थर्टी थ्री क्लासेज थी और फिर उसका मेन्स का मिनी टेस्ट दे सकते हैं तो एक तरफ वो रिविजन चल रहा है पॉलिटी जो भी सब्जेक्ट कम्प्लीट होता जा रहा है पॉलिटी फिर इकनॉमी ये सब एक चंक चल रहा है जब क्लास आप अटेंड कर रहे हो थ्री आवर्स वाली और बाकी आपको ऑप्शनल का टाइम है और न्यूज़पेपर्स। सर व्हेन यू रीड द न्यूज़पेपर, डोंट यू फील लाइक कि सम ऑफ द थिंग्स आर देयर इन द इनिशियल फेज व्हिच यू डू नॉट अंडरस्टैंड फॉर व्हिच यू हैव टू रेफर द मंथली करंट अफेयर मैगजीन्स पेजेस जस्ट यू हैव टू आई हैव टू लर्न फ्रॉम द मंथली करंट अफेयर मैगजीन बिकॉज़ देयर आर मेनी थिंग्स इन द हिंदू व्हिच आई एम अनएबल टू अंडरस्टैंड गिविंग वन आर टू दैट इज नॉट जस्टिस अकॉर्डिंग टू मी या दैट्स अ वेरी रिलेवेंट प्रॉब्लम आई आल्सो फेस दिस सो द इंपॉर्टेंस इज दैट द प्रोसेस इज आइटरेटिव let's say when you start your preparation read the syllabus read the previous year questions this will give you an idea of what is relevant or not what basic ideas they are asking you don't have to understand everything at once karte raho syllabus pad liya previous year questions pad liye fir newspaper aur notes pad rahe hain theek hai kuch cheeze newspaper mein nahi samajh mein aayi ek bar google kar liya basic idea le liya zyada time nahi spend karna hai kyunki aapki jo newspaper aap pad rahe ho it is just for general awareness 
कोई बहुत ज़्यादा आपको उसमें से समझना नहीं है समझना है हमें जो क्लास में पढ़ाया जा रहा है या जो टेक्स्ट बुक है वहाँ से और वंस यू आर क्लोज टू दी एग्जाम आप पी टी या जो मंथली मैगजीन पढ़ रहे हो वहाँ से आप वैसे ही समझते जाओगे चीज़ें क्योंकि मंथली मैगजीन में कुछ बैकग्राउंड भी दे देते हैं और एक और बॉक्स होता है जिसमें उसके और एक एडिशनल इन्फॉर्मेशन दी होती है तो वहाँ से आप हम समझ लेंगे न्यूज़पेपर से हमें केवल ये समझना है कि आइडिया चल क्या रहा है और गवर्नमेंट कोई बिल लेके आ रही है तो उसके पीछे क्या डिस्कशन हो रहे हैं तो इतना आइडिया लेना है सो दैट्स हाउ और फिर जब आप वापस करोगे सिलेबस पी वाई अपने नोट फिर न्यूज़ वापस पढ़ रहे हो तो तीन चार महीने बाद अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स वुड बिकम क्लियर टू यू थैंक यू सर बट सर न्यूज़पेपर में अगर समझ नोट्स बनाना पड़ता है ना उससे तो अगर समझ में नहीं आएगा तो कैसे नोट्स बनाएंगे नहीं इट इज़ नॉट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू मेक नोट्स इन दी स्टार्टिंग फेज व्हेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग योर प्रिपरेशन आप नोट्स अगर ना भी बनाओ ज़्यादा न्यूज़पेपर से केवल आपको लगता है जो चीज़ें आपको समझ में आ गई हैं बस उसी के नोट्स बनाओ बाकी आपके मंथली मैगजीन और पी टी मेन सी ये तो है ही ना फॉल है ये कि ये तो सब कुछ कवर कर ही रही हैं जो मुझे समझ में आ गया न्यूज़ से वो मैं अपने नोट्स में डाल दूँगा और जो बचा रह गया तो मेंस के पहले या प्रीलिम्स के पहले आई वुड कवर इट फ्रॉम प्रीलिम्स फ्रॉम पीटी 365 ओके सर सर एक चीज और कि जैसे हाउ टू मेक वी हैव टू मेक टू काइंड्स ऑफ नोट्स ना फर्स्ट बल्की वन एंड द सेकंड वन शॉर्ट नोट फॉर फास्टर रिवीजन सो कैन यू गाइड अ लिटिल बिट हाउ टू मेक दिस टू काइंड्स ऑफ नोट्स ठीक है इसको एक बार लास्ट में ले लेंगे जब हम लोग शुभम के साथ पहले डिस्कशन करेंगे शुभम भी कुछ ना कुछ ऐड कर देंगे ओके थैंक यू सर हां क्शन Uh, for example if you have already read at least 50 60% of your main syllabus before the prelims itself so then things would be easier or uh, so if you can just let me know if you have not even touched the main syllabus the optional syllabus yes sir okay so i think that the first focus should be on optional that uh, because that can be the deal breaker when you give your mains so first of all try to cover the optional as soon as you can in respect of the theory the whatever readings you have to do and uh, subsequently you can go to ethics because ethics would be a new uh, factor as well and uh, then try to i think this would take about one month for you if you are entirely reading the optional but uh, after that you can go about revisions and test series uh, from that so that that would be the sequence at first cover the basics of your optional then ethics and uh, then go for gs test series etc so uh, matlab direct टेस्ट सीरीज से स्टार्ट कर देना है ऐसे लिखना आंसर हैव यू नॉट डन आंसर राइटिंग आल्सो बिफोर नो सर ओके सो व्हाइल यू आर रीडिंग योर ऑप्शनल आई एम श्योर इट वुड बी वेरी बोरिंग इफ यू रीड इट फॉर एंटायर डे सो व्हाट यू कैन डू इज यू ऑलरेडी हैव सम ग्रास्प ओवर द जीएस 50% ऑफ द जीएस स्टैटिक पार्ट बिकॉज़ यू हैव क्लियर्ड यू आर एक्सपेक्टिंग टू क्लियर द प्रीलिम्स सो यू कैन स्टार्ट विद सम आंसर राइटिंग सम डेली आंसर राइटिंग और राइटिंग द असाइनमेंट्स which are given in the uh, in the test in the in the classes for that part for 50 percent let's say gs1 gs1 is something history and geography you have already studied similarly polity and economy you have studied for prelims so you can start answer writing for that and uh, you can take one hour for answer writing i mean whatever is your plan and you can also divide between optional and uh, there would be main specific topics like security science and tech uh, ir which you have to cover so try to complete all this new reading within the first month and then uh, you can proceed to revision and uh, test series okay sir thank you sir here yeah. uh, sir on your right okay. hi sir so uh, i have a couple of doubts yeah. my first doubt is about the recent prelims exam 2023 so considering the uncertainty of the questions and the wide range which is being asked if you were to have a choice Uh, to give more time to revision of the same static so sources, or to give more time, maybe say um, do four to five times revision and then give more time to googling or YouTube videos, so as to have a more ambit of knowledge about the same topic. What would you choose? And my second question is, considering your educational background, uh, you had various opportunities, maybe for a lucrative corporate career or some. 
and especially considering uh, once you landed up in the interview in your first attempt and then you couldn't clear prelims what motivated you to again give upsc considering the more increasing uncertainty of this exam right so uh, i would ask answer the second question first because that is fresh uh, in my mind so <clears throat> i agree that i had various other opportunities joining the corporate or joining the uh, uh, university for a for going for research or higher studies but what motivated me for civil services is the wide platform that it provides and the selflessness aspect which is there in the civil services which is i, I think unique in across all the uh, professions that we can choose so that was the same motivation which i which helped me carry forward after the failure in second prelims as well and also there was that feeling that abhi maine apna pura nahi diya hai i have not shown my potential fully in this exam as i said ki first mains mein wo uh, lethargic wala attitude tha ki theek hai likh to diya ab isme aur kya likhna hai to lekin kahin na kahin mujhe pata tha ki i am not giving that full because i had uh, listen to toppers who were saying ki hamara paper pura nahi ho raha ya fir we have to fight for that every half mark बट ऐसा मैंने फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट में कुछ नहीं किया था सो आई समवेयर इन माय हार्ट आई न्यू कि मे बी आई हैव नॉट गिवन माय फुल इन दिस एग्जाम एंड आई डिड नॉट वांट टू लीव इट बिफोर गिविंग माय फुल एफर्ट सो दैट वाज द बेसिक आइडिया व्हिच प्रोपेल्ड मी फ्रॉम आफ्टर सेकंड प्रीलिम्स टू द थर्ड अटैम्प्ट एंड योर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन वाज इफ यू कैन आई एम सॉरी यू कैन जस्ट टेल मी वन वर्ड हां ओके सो द चॉइस बिटवीन रिवाइजिंग मोर एंड रीडिंग न्यू see uh what my understanding is that revision always helps you to improve accuracy to improve confidence and when they ask you new questions in prelims i think those are also a test of how do you approach things that you don't know so largely 50 60 i mean no matter how much you read no matter how much new google terms googling and all this you can do there would always be those 60 70 questions which would be uh, of the mark for you in the exam so there's a balance it doesn't mean that you can ignore anything and just go with uh, uh, logic and uh, because you itne kam aate honge to fir to aise padhne ka fayda hi kya hai aisa nahi hai we have to study uh, jo bhi basic books hain wo aur jo questions wo pooch chuke hain wo to hame padhne hi hai us agar usme themes repeat ho rahi hain jaise main paper is bar prisons uh, act pe pucha hai unhone aur ye 21 mein bhi pucha tha aisa question kuch prisons act pe ki wo state ke under aati hain ya kya hai तो इस तरह की अगर कोई थीम्स रिपीट हो रही हैं तो वो आप एक बार देख लो जैसे 21 वन प्रिलिम्स में एक तैमूर इन्वेजन या स्पेफ क्वेश्चन था वो मुझे नहीं आता था बट उसके बाद मैंने देखा कि मॉन्गोल्स कब कब इन्वेट करा उन्होंने और जैसे ये मैप बनाए तो इस तरह से थीम्स अगर आ रही हैं तो उनको देखते रहो अगर कोई रैंडम क्वेश्चन है जैसे उस बार एक थ्री सिटी पर क्वेश्चन था ट्वेंटी में अब मुझे याद है क्योंकि ये वाला पेपर नहीं हुआ था मेरा तो इसलिए मुझे ये वाले क्वेश्चन अच्छे से याद हैं तो एक असेशन रीजन का ट्री सिटी पे क्वेश्चन था अब मैं उस ट्री सिटी के पीछे नहीं जाऊंगा क्योंकि उसमें लॉजिक था वो कैपिटल डेवलपमेंट फंड उन्होंने यूज़ कर रखा था तो वो लॉजिक से एलिमिनेट हो सकता था तो कहीं कहीं लॉजिक हो जाता है अप्लाई अभी भी इस साल भी यूज़ होगा लॉजिक आई एम श्योर अगर आप अच्छे से एनालाइज करो तो डूएबल होंगे लॉजिक से भी तो बट अगर थीम्स रिपीट हो रही हैं या कुछ ऐसे हैं जो काफ़ी क्लोज है सिलेबस के तो उसको एक बार पढ़ लो तो ये थोड़ा डिफिकल्ट बैलेंस है अंडरस्टैंड लेकिन दोनों को लेके चलना आपको नया भी पढ़ते रहना और बट रिविजन भी अच्छे से करते रहो सो so, इस साल का पेपर काफी अनएक्सपेक्टेड था जो प्रिलिम्स हुआ सो डू वी एक्सपेक्ट कि नेक्स्ट ईयर वैसा पेपर आएगा या फिर पैटर्न चेंज होगा क्योंकि सम पीपल गॉट लकी उन्होंने ऑप्शन सी ओ डी मान के ओनली टू करेक्ट मारे बट अगर एड अगर हम करेक्ट ऑप्शन देते हैं वन एंड टू सही था और फिर वो उनका टू वहां सही हो गया सो दिस कांट बी द राइट वे टू चूज द टू चूज द ऑफिसर्स लाइक it it is only on the basis of luck so can we expect next year this kind of paper uh, first of all uh, i have no authority to uh, no like only to, to oh, comment on this but uh, yeah i i know what you are trying to ask only thing that we can expect is the unexpected so so that's where i would like to put it mai mai kya matlab koi bhi nahi bata sakta ki kya expect kar sakte hai agle saal ab jo pooch rahe hain hame to taiyari usi se karni hai humse wo ye nahi puchte ki exam kaisa hona chahiye क्या करना चाहिए सो दैट सो सो ऐसे पेपर के लिए हमारी अप्रोच क्या हो सकती है लाइक व्हाट कुड बी योर अप्रोच अप्रोच सेम रहेगी नो मैटर हाउ द पेपर इज यू हैव टू डू रिवीजन ऑफ व्हाट यू हैव स्टडीड क्योंकि आप एक हमें लगता है कि हमने दो बार पढ़ लिया बहुत है एग्जाम में जाके याद आ जाएगा लेकिन आप मॉक टेस्ट में देखोगे जो ये मैं 45 क्वेश्चंस की बात कर रहा था जो फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन में आप करते हो उस 45 में भी आपके 80% ही सही होंगे तो वो नौ क्वेश्चंस क्यों गलत हो रहे हैं जो आपको लग रहा है कि मुझे सही आते हैं 
अगर रिविजन सारा अच्छा है तो और जैसे जैसे रिविजन बढ़ाओगे वो कम होते जाएंगे 90 95 परसेंट तक एक्यूरेसी जाएगी सो so, इसलिए ये इंपॉर्टेंट है कि आप पाँच छः बार रिविजन करो अपनी एक्यूरेसी इसी में बढ़ा लो जो अभी भी उन्होंने अनप्रडिक्टेबल वाले क्वेश्चन या मतलब बहुत ये सब पूछे तो सौ में से फोर्टी फोर्टी तो आपके नोट्स या उस एरिया से होंगे अभी भी ये अनसर्टेंटी है उन बीस क्वेश्चन में जो इसके बाहर वाले हैं जो रैंडमनेस uh, वाले क्वेश्चन है वो आप वैसे ही हो सकता है सही ना अटेंड कर पाते हैं आप उनको पढ़ भी लोगे तो नेक्स्ट ईयर वो कुछ और पूछ लेंगे इस तरह के रैंडम वो ऐसा पूछेंगे नहीं लेकिन जो आपके एरिया में से आ रहे हैं उसमें कोई गलत नहीं होना चाहिए उसकी एक्यूरेसी आप हंड्रेड परसेंट कर सकते हो ये आपका टारगेट रहना चाहिए जो फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन में मैं क्वेश्चन कर रहा हूँ उसकी एक्यूरेसी हंड्रेड परसेंट होनी चाहिए क्योंकि जो मुझे आता है तभी तो मैं फर्स्ट आइट्रेशन में कर रहा हूँ वो गलत क्यों हो रहा है क्योंकि हमारा रिविजन सही नहीं है रिकॉल सही नहीं है कॉन्फिडेंस सही नहीं है क्वेश्चन हमने गलत पढ़ लिया ये वाली गलती कभी नहीं होनी चाहिए कि आपने क्वेश्चन गलत पढ़ लिया वो नॉट करेक्ट पूछा करेक्ट कर दिया तो ये वाले सब आपके कंट्रोलेबल्स हैं ये आपके हाथ में और इन्हीं के थ्रू बच्चे एग्जाम भी निकाल सकते हैं आप क्योंकि कितने तेरह हज़ार तो फिर भी निकाल रहे हैं तो इसलिए यही सब ये वाले चीज़ों पे ज़्यादा फोकस करो जो रैंडमनेस बढ़ रही है जो अनप्रडिक्टेबिलिटी बढ़ रही है उससे पहले आप अपना स्ट्रैटिक वाला पार्ट कवर करो अभी आपकी फाउंडेशन बिल्ड होगी नेक्स्ट नाइन टेन मंथ्स में इसको बहुत अच्छे से रिवाइज़ करो और जैसा आपने पूछा था कि क्लास के वो आपने बहुत अच्छा पॉइंट बताया कि क्लास के बाद क्लास का नोट्स रिवाइज़ करो और क्लास के पहले भी एक बार पढ़ के आओ कि अभी तक क्या चल रहा है पॉलिटी इकोनॉमी इन सब में काफ़ी लिंक्ड होते हैं चीज़ें तो अगर आप रिवाइज़ करते रहोगे क्लास में समझते रहोगे बात के लिए मत रखो कि मेंस के प्रेलिम्स के बाद पढ़ूंगा ये करूंगा अभी चीज़ें खत्म करते रहो क्योंकि सिलेबस विल एक्सपैंड लाइक एनी इन द नेक्स्ट नाइन और टेन मंथ्स सर सर वट इज़ द रोल ऑफ न्यूज़ पेपर इन प्रेलिम्स पेपर लाइक मेन रोल सो न्यूज़ पेपर इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ये प्रेजेंस वाला क्वेश्चन है तो अगर आप न्यूज़पेपर पढ़ रहे होगे तो कहीं ना कहीं ये मेंशन होता है कि प्रेजेंस में इंस्पेक्शन हुआ मतलब मैं एक जनरल एग्जांपल दे रहा हूँ कि एक ये आइडिया लग जाता है कि जो प्रेजेंस होते हैं वो स्टेट के अंडर आते हैं एक प्रेजेंस का मेरे ख्याल से एक प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी या ऑफिसर होते हैं और मिनिस्टर भी होता है तो इस तरह से एक जनरल अवेयरनेस आपकी बन जाती है जब आप न्यूज़ पढ़ते हो वो अवेयरनेस डायरेक्टली ठीक है नॉलेज हमें वो पेपर का क्वेश्चन का आंसर नहीं मिलेगा न्यूज़पेपर में लेकिन एक आइडिया लगता रहेगा कि हाँ अगर कोई ट्री सिटी मान लो ट्री सिटी का आपने आर्टिकल पढ़ रखा है तो आपको ये आइडिया हो कि कोई फाउंडेशन एनवायरनमेंट से लिंक ही ये सब काम करेगी ना कोई कैपिटल डेवलपमेंट फंड मतलब जो वर्ल्ड बैंक या इस तरह की ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वो शायद ना करें तो इस तरह के लॉजिक आपके इंप्रूव होंगे न्यूज़पेपर से और कुछ क्वेश्चन तो डायरेक्ट भी आएंगे जो हो सकता है न्यूज़पेपर में डायरेक्टली कवर हो तो इसलिए जब आप मंथली मैगजीन पढ़ोगे तो आप लिंक कर पाओगे कि हाँ न्यूज़पेपर मैंने इतना बेसिक पढ़ा था कि ये बिल आने वाला है अब प्रोज एंड कॉन्स या वे फॉरवर्ड ये सब हम मंथली मैगजीन से देख लेंगे तो इसलिए न्यूज़ पेपर से इंपॉर्टेंट है उनको कभी मत छोड़ो नो मैटर हाउ अनप्रडिक्टेबल दी पेपर माइट सीम टू बी यू मेट थिंक कि न्यूज़पेपर से कुछ नहीं आ रहा है लेकिन वो डॉट्स आप तभी ज्वाइन कर पाओगे जब आप न्यूज़पेपर डेली पढ़ रहे हो कि आप देख रहे हो टॉपिक कैसे इवॉल्व हो रहा है कि बिल यहाँ रिजेक्ट हुआ कमेटी में चला गया तो ये तो एक एप्लीकेशन है ना जो हम लक्ष्मीकांत में पढ़ते हैं तो इससे अच्छा और हमारे लिए एप्लीके वो आसान क्या हो सकता है जैसे मुझे याद है सरोगेसी बिल जब ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी के आसपास वो काफ़ी कमेटी में गया था उसकी कमेटीज़ की विजिट होती नहीं अलग अलग स्टेट में ये सब न्यूज़पेपर में आता है अब आपसे पार्लियामेंट्री कमेटीज़ के बेनिफिट्स पूछेंगे मेन्स में आप बता सकते हो कि वो पब्लिक डिस्कशन करते हैं उनकी और उन्होंने एक्चुअली पब्लिक डिस्कशन करके कुछ पॉइंट्स इंप्रूव करे थे सरोगेसी बिल में तो आप वो बता सकते हो कि पीपल सेंट्रिक अप्रोच हो सकती है तो न्यूज़पेपर्स तो हमेशा इंपॉर्टेंट रहेंगे तो सो जी एस मीन्स के लिए सब्जेक्ट स्पेसिफिक शॉर्ट नोट्स कैसे बनाए जाएँ लाइक हर सब्जेक्ट के लिए डिफरेंट डिफरेंट वे होगा नोट्स बनाने का अगर हम पॉलिटी देखें तो पॉलिटी के लिए अलग अप्रोच होगी हिस्ट्री के लिए अलग अप्रोच होगी तो आपकी इकोनॉमी के लिए क्या अप्रोच हुआ करती थी फॉर इकोनॉमी स्पेसिफिकली सी शॉर्ट नोट्स मुझे उतना नहीं लगता कि ज़्यादा डिफरेंट होते हैं टॉपिक वाइज आप अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव क्या है शॉर्ट नोट्स या कुछ भी बनाने का कि हमें क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करना है एग्जाम में सो वंस यू आर लुकिंग एट दी सिलेबस दी पी वाई क्यूज एंड द टेस्ट सीरीज तो अभी मैं इस पर आता हूँ दिस इज ऑल्सो कवर्ड इन लेटर बट आप जब वो देखते रहोगे तो आपको आइडिया लगता रहेगा कि एग्जाम के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट क्या है और शॉर्ट नोट्स में हमें केवल वो इंक्लूड करना है जो हमें नहीं आता है कई बार हम वो चीज़ें लिख देते हैं जो हमें आती है हमें लगता है कि अच्छा लगता है एक बार फिर से लिख देते हैं कहीं भूल ना जाए लेकिन उनका क्या जो हमें आती ही नहीं है उनको तो पक्का भूल जाएंगे जो हमें आती हैं वो तो वैसे ही याद रहने वाली हैं अब आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी
यू आर आस्किंग कि जब मेंस के प्रिपरेशन लाइक like, अभी मैंने इस बार का प्रीलिम्स दिया था और okay. मेरे आंसर्स मेरे नंबर काफी वेरी कर रहे हैं लाइक like, 20 मार्क्स का वेरिएशन अगर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट्स के अकॉर्डिंग तो मैं कंसीडर कर रहा हूं कि मेरा इस बार नहीं होने वाला है क्योंकि जो मैक्सिमम मार्क्स आ रहे हैं वो एक ही बार एटी अबाउ जा रहे हैं एक ही एक ही की से ऊपर जा रहे हैं बाकी सारे उसके नीचे हैं तो मुझे अब क्या अप्रोच है नीचे कि मुझे कितने आंसर्स लिखने हैं बिफोर दिसंबर तो मैं सही स्टैंड कर सकूँ कि हाँ मैंने अच्छा प्रिपेयर किया है ठीक है आंसर्स आप एक बेसिक आंसर राइटिंग कर लो अगर आपने अभी नहीं करी है कि जो क्लास के असाइनमेंट्स होते हैं या फिर जो भी डेली आंसर राइटिंग आप फॉलो करना चाहते हो या सेक्शनल टेस्ट दे दो उससे आंसर राइटिंग स्टार्ट कर लो फिर अल्टीमेटली जो टेस्ट है वो है टेस्ट सीरीज जो आप थ्री आवर्स में लिखोगे उसका आपको फीडबैक मिलेगा कि आपका ये चीज़ें बेटर है ये चीज़ें ख़राब हैं तो उनके फीडबैक पे वर्क करना है तो मैं कोई नंबर ऑफ आंसर्स नहीं बता सकता बट एक बार आपने टेस्ट दिए सफिशेंट तब आपको अपने आप आइडिया लग जाएगा कि हाँ अब तो मैं जी एस तो मेरा हो गया है इसमें फीडबैक भी इतना कुछ इंप्रूवमेंट का नहीं आ रहा है आई कैन मूव टू जी एस टू तो उस तरह के थ्री आर टेस्ट जब आप दोगे फाइनली अल्टीमेट टेस्ट वही है कि जब आप तीन घंटे में बीस क्वेश्चन लिख पा रहे हो कि नहीं टू दी सेटिस्फैक्शन ऑफ द एग्जामिनर जैसे हम फिल्म्स का देखते हैं तो फिल्म्स वाली क्वेश्चन में होता है कि जो टेस्ट सीरीज वाली क्वेश्चन होते हैं ना जो पी वाई होते हैं वो काफी डिफरेंट होते हैं पी वाई क्यूज काफी एनालिटिकल होते हैं और जो प्रॉब्लम्स की टेस्ट सीरीज वाली क्वेश्चन होते हैं वो एनालिटिकल नहीं होते हैं लाइक वो कुछ डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन होते हैं और किसी कोई सरपेड नहीं होता है ऐसा मेन्स में भी होता है क्या लाइक मेन्स के जो पी वाई क्यूज हैं और जो मेन्स के टेस्ट सीरीज वाली क्वेश्चन है उनमें काफी डिफरेंस होता है देखिये हम जो टेस्ट सीरीज देते हैं उसका पॉइंट क्या होता है एक तो यही होता है कि हमें जो क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में मिलने वाले हैं उसके सिमिलर पैटर्न के हमें टेस्ट सीरीज में मिल जाए पर अगर वो इतना सिमिलर होता तो कोचिंग की जगह यू ना बन जाता मतलब यू अलग पैटर्न क्यों रखता है क्योंकि वो कोचिंग से डिफरेंट रहे तो वहाँ तो डिफरेंट रहना ही रहना है आप ये मत सोचो कि जो वहाँ मिलना है वो आपको यहाँ मिल जाएगा लेकिन फिर भी टे, फिर टेस्ट सीरीज इम्पोर्टेंट क्यों है क्योंकि हमें अपने आप को टेस्ट करना है कि जो आ, तीन घंटे में टेस्ट लिखने वाली चीज़ है इंट्रोडक्शन कॉन्क्लूजन तो आपको फिर भी लिखना ही है पॉइंट्स लिखने ही है अब जैसे जो मैंने अभी स्ट्रक्चर्स दिखाए ये तो आपको वैसे भी लिखने क्वेश्चन कुछ भी आए तो वो प्रैक्टिस आप टेस्ट सीरीज में करिए फिर अगर यूपीएससी में कुछ अलग आता है तो सभी के लिए अलग होगा सो दैट वोट बी अ मेजर इशू होता है अलग होता है अंडरस्टैंड मेन्स में भी होता है प्रेजेंट में भी होता है मॉक इंटरव्यू में भी होता है मॉक इंटरव्यू में कोचिंग का एनवायरमेंट वहाँ का एनवायरमेंट डिफरेंट होता है पर सभी के लिए डिफरेंट होता है तो सेम तो हो नहीं सकता पर जितना भी हम अपने फैक्ट अपने हाथ में जो चीज़ें हैं हम उतनी करते हैं और फिर वी होप फॉर द बेस्ट ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो नाउ वील क्विकली मूव अहेड बिकॉज आई थिंक ओके Uh, there is a question from uh, Ritwik Sharma, sir. Did you make notes for newspaper and monthly magazine? If yes, then how you did that? Okay. So uh, my idea was that in the initial phase in 2019 when I started preparation, I used to make notes of newspaper. Although I did not know कि क्या आएगा exam में क्या relevant है कि नहीं. और but फिर भी मैं एक डेढ़ घंटा लगाता था केवल notes बनाने में. दो घंटा newspaper पढ़ता था. एक घंटा इसमें लगाता था. And that was the time when I was in final year of college. तब मेरे पास total छः सात घंटे होते थे दिन में. उसमें से तीन घंटे न्यूज़पेपर में चले जाते थे पर मुझे लगता था कि मैं बहुत अच्छा काम कर रहा हूँ <laughs> तो अब पता चल रहा है कि जो तब के नोट्स हैं वो तो शायद कभी नहीं पूछे जाने वाले यूपीएससी में तो इसलिए इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट जो चीज़ें आपकी क्लास में चल रही हैं जब इनिशियल आप स्टार्ट कर रहे हो तब आप उससे लिंक जितना कर पाओ उसमें जो चीज़ें ऐड कर पाओ न्यूज़ में वो ऐड करते रहो अगर एंटी डिफेक्शन लोग क्लास में पढ़ाया गया कुछ एग्जाम्पल मिल गया या कुछ डेटा आ गया न्यूज़ में तो वो इंक्लूड कर दो लेकिन बहुत बल्कि नोट्स अभी स्टार्टिंग में मत बनाओ मंथली मैगजीन से बना सकते हो If you want to, but it's totally up to you. क्योंकि मुझे वन नोट यूज़ करने में कम्फर्टेबल था तो मैंने काफ़ी जी एस वन मतलब सारे जी एस वाइज टॉपिक वाइज सब नोट्स बना दिए थे बहुत टाइम इन्वेस्ट कर दिया था तो मैं मंथली मैगजीन से भी वहीं पर कॉपी कर देता था तो इट्स अप टू यू कि आप अगर ऐसे कॉपी करते हो टाइम थोड़ा है तो लगा सकते हो नहीं तो फिर मंथली मैगजीन में मार्क करके और बाद में भी रिवाइज कर सकते हो लेकिन ज़्यादा न्यूज़ पेपर से नोट्स में बनाओ स्टार्टिंग में बाद में आपको समझ में आ जाएगा कि क्या इंपॉर्टेंट है क्या नहीं जब आप टेस्ट सीरीज दोगे पी वाई क्यूज देखोगे तब आइडिया लग जाएगा सेकेंड इज Swarnali Bhattacharjee has asked a question. What was your strategy for society and IR part? So Swarnali, my uh, strategy was for society, as I said, the class notes, the vision, the Smriti Ma'am, I found them very uh, relevant to the point or exhaustive. Puri coverage thi syllabus ki, so nearly sara kam society ka wahan se ho gaya. Jo current affairs mein kuch topics chal rahe hain, jaise for example surrogacy bill hi tha, ya ek ek aur act aayi thi, shayad maternity benefits act. Is tarah ki kuch
तो काफ़ी सारी चीज़ें कवर्ड हो गई थी एंड फेयरली एग्जॉस्टिव बट उसके फिर शॉर्ट नोट्स बनाना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि हमें जब एग्ज़ाम में जो लिखना है उन सेवन मिनट्स में एलेवन मिनट्स में वो कैसे वो कैसे हम इंकॉर्पोरेट कर पाएंगे अब आई के क्वेश्चन थोड़े ट्रिकी भी हो रहे हैं उतने जनरल नहीं पूछ रहे हैं तो थोड़ा वहाँ पर टेस्ट सीरीज से थीम्स आइडेंटिफाई करना इंपॉर्टेंट है जैसे श्रीलंका का एक क्वेश्चन आया था इस बार जी एस टू में और सिमिलर क्वेश्चन वो टेस्ट वो न्यूज़ में चल रहा था टेस्ट सीरीज में भी था सो so, वो थीम अपने आप ही प्रिपेयर हो गई थी क्या डेटा है कितना इंडिया ने फोर पॉइंट फोर बिलियन डॉलर्स की कुछ लाइन ऑफ क्रेडिट एक्सटेंड करी है सब जो डेटा था वो अपने आप याद हो जाएगा आपको टेस्ट सीरीज सॉल्व करके सोल्यूशन देख के तो वहाँ से आप फाइनल कवरेज दे सकते हो और इनिशियल आप क्लास नोट से स्टार्ट कर सकते हो देर इज अ क्वेश्चन बाई अंकित पटेल सर हाउ टू प्रिपेयर कंटेंट फॉर आंसर राइटिंग रेसिपी ऑफ गुड आंसर ओके सो कंटेंट फॉर आंसर राइटिंग इज अंकित इफ यू कैन प्लीज क्लैरिफाई योर क्वेश्चन आई विल टेक दैट अप लेटर एंड आदित्य राज हाउ हैज आज द क्वेश्चन हाउ डू यू प्रिपेयर फॉर मैथ्स ऑप्शनल सो लेटर ऑन आई हैव इंक्लूडेड अ लिंक ऑफ माई टेलीग्राम चैनल ऑन विच आई हैव मोस्टली इंक्लूडेड पोस्ट ऑन मैथ्स ऑप्शनल टूडे आई वुड फोकस मोर ऑन जी एस बिकॉज इट वुड भी रेलिवेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू बट दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव मैथ्स ऑप्शनल दे कैन रेफर टू माई टेलीग्राम चैनल देयर I am uploading notes and all the uh, strategies that I had used. Uh, Ritvik, I have already answered your question. Uh, there is a question. It's a thick guy. Should repeat who I? Okay, fine. So we will uh, quickly move to the next part because Shubham is waiting for. Hmm. Thick guy. Thick guy. Huh. ठीक है इरेज अच्छा ठीक सो दिस वॉज अप टू मेन्स नो इंटरव्यू आई वुड जस्ट गिव यू एन आइडिया बिकॉज इट्स नॉट दैट मच क्लोज फॉर यू एंड नॉट बट स्टिल यू कैन स्टार्ट वर्किंग ऑन द इंटरव्यू इट इज नॉट जस्ट कि आप जो मेन्स के बाद ही करोगे थोड़ा बहुत बेसिक आइडिया आप रख सकते हो सो वॉट आई इम्प्रूव ऑन वॉज Since it was my first attempt, जो पहला इंटरव्यू था I was uh, low on knowledge base. कि कई सारे जी एस की चीज़ें मुझे नहीं आती थी और सिमिलर थिंग जो कि जी एस में मार्क्स भी वैसे भी कम थे तो uh, उतना ज़्यादा स्ट्रॉग नॉलेज बेस नहीं था सो इफ दे यूज टू आस्क मी क्वेश्चन देन आई यूज टू गेट लो ऑन कॉन्फिडेंस एंड दैट रिफ्लेक्टेड इन माई क्वालिटी ऑफ आंसर एंड दैट गिव दैट डजेंट गिव अ गुड इम्प्रेशन वैन यू आर नॉट योर सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंट इन वॉट यू आर सेंग देन हाउ वुड दी अदर पर्सन एक्सेप्ट दिस एक्सेप्ट योर आंसर so that was one thing second i got a feedback ki uh, your voice is low so i try to increase the loudness of my voice actually i used to uh, practice in my room uh, during this attempt thinking that i am shouting at someone so <laughs> so us level pe jab meri voice mujhe lagta tha ki main chilla raha hu tab ja ke aisa lagta tha ki ha sunai de raha hai to ye practice kari thi ek तो ये सबके लिए हो सकता है रेलिवेंट ना कुछ का होगा कि भाई धीरे बोलोगे तब लगेगा कि चिल्ला रहा है सो so, <laughs> और अनदर थिंग वॉज की प्रिपरेशन थोड़ी इंटेंस थी इस बार अर्लियर मैं केवल नॉलेज पे फोकस कर रहा था कि नोट्स बना लिए ये भी पढ़ लिया वो भी पढ़ लिया इस बार क्यू एंड ए फॉर्मेट में प्रिपरेशन थी कि जो क्वेश्चन वो पूछ सकते हैं न्यूज़ पेपर्स में से खुद ही क्वेश्चन uh, निकाले थे कि आज के न्यूज़ पेपर में अगर आज इंटरव्यू होता तो आज क्या पूछते वो तो क्वेश्चन पहले फ्रेम करें फिर उनके आंसर्स खुद सोचे या और न्यूज़पेपर में से फाइंड आउट करें वन ऑन वन सेशन मैंने अपने फ्रेंड uh, के साथ काफ़ी ज़्यादा किए थे इस बार अबाउट फिफ्टी सिक्सटी क्वेश्चन और हम दोनों के uh, अच्छे मार्क्स आए हैं इस बार इंटरव्यू में और सेक लास्ट uh, ये था कि आंसर थोड़े क्रिस्प रखने की कोशिश करी अर्लियर थोड़ा बीटिंग अराउंड द बुश होती थी और uh, इस बार ये था कि जो पूछा गया उसको फर्स्ट लाइन में आंसर करो और टोटल आंसर थर्टी या फोर्टी फाइव सेकेंड्स तक ही रखो मैंने अपने आंसर रिकॉर्ड भी करे थे क्योंकि टाइम भी बहुत था रिजल्ट आ गया था दिसंबर में और Uh, मेरा इंटरव्यू था एलेवेंथ uh, मई को तो पाँच छः महीने थे बीच में प्रेलिम्स का भी पढ़ना था बट uh, इस तरह से अपने आंसर्स को रिकॉर्ड करके फिर सुना तो पता चला कि क्या बकवास कर रहा हूँ मैं इसमें <laughs> तो इसलिए uh, अपने आंसर्स को रिफाइन करना बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है आप जब लिख भी लेते हैं हम तो लिखने में अच्छा लगता है क्योंकि लिखने में हमारे पास टाइम होता है पर जब हम बोलते हैं तो सुनते भी नहीं है कि हमने क्या बोला बोल दिया बस वो तो दूसरा वाला सुन रहा है और बोल के फिर जब हम रिकॉर्ड करके फिर सुनते हैं तब पता चलता है कि हम तो क्या ही बोल दिया था हमने तो अगर ये कोई हमसे बोलता तो तो उसको उसकी सुनते भी ना तो इसलिए ये ये चीज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि आप रिकॉर्ड करो अपने आंसर्स जब इंटरव्यू के लिए आप प्रिपेयर करो और उसको सुनो उससे टाइम भी पता चल जाता है कि आप 30 सेकंड्स 45 सेकंड्स ले रहे हो एक आंसर के लिए कितना बोलने पे कितना टाइम लगता है और अपना आंसर्स की क्वालिटी भी पता चल जाती है 
So now uh, this is the final part of my uh, talk, but the most important. Now uh, what happens is that now you would understand that conventionally जो कहा जाता है कि एक ideal मतलब एक अच्छा background से candidate कैसा होना चाहिए? Someone who who has been good at academics, someone let's say who is from an IIT background, or uh, 10, 12 में school में अच्छे marks आए हों ये सब हो. तो मेरे friend मुझसे यही कहते थे कि तुम्हारे पास तो सब जितना भी जो जो चाहिए होता है एकेडमिकली वो सब कुछ है तो एकेडमिक्स वाइज यू हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग यू आर अ स्ट्रॉन्ग कैंडिडेट फॉर दिस एग्जाम तो मैंने भी उनको बिलीव कर लिया जब कॉलेज में तो ऐसे फ्रेंड से ठीक है तो इसलिए यू हैव टू एनालाइज योर सेल्फ वरना ये एग्जाम फिर रियलिटी चेक देगा जो मुझे सेकेंड पहले के बाद आई होप एवरी वन इज़ कम्फर्टेबल इन हिंदी ठीक है एनी वन हु नॉट कम्फर्टेबल इन ठीक है सो मेरे फिर ये एग्जाम आपको रियलिटी चेक देगा सेकेंड मतलब कहीं ना कहीं बीच में देगा और uh, या तो एग्जाम से ले लो या फिर खुद अपना अपने आप को असेस कर लो तो इसलिए इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट कि आप जो अप्स एंड डाउन्स आएंगे इस एग्जाम में उनको ब्रेस कर पाओ जो एक हार्ड इम्पैक्ट कभी भी मिल सकता है यू हैव टू सस्टेन मतलब थ्रू दैट उसमें सो इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट कि यू मेनटेन गुड मेंटल हेल्थ अब मेंटल हेल्थ ठीक है तो जनरल टर्म है उसमें क्या Uh, ऐसा कुछ पता नहीं चलता ना अगर मुझसे भी कोई कहे कि यू हैव टू मेंटेन गुड मेंटल हेल्थ तो मैं कहूँ अच्छा ठीक है फिर व्हाट नेक्स्ट तो इसलिए लेट्स एनालाइज कि व्हाई वी फील लो बेस्ड ऑन माय ओन एक्सपीरियंस कि देर वर अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स व्हेन आई यूज टू फील लो स्पेशली इन द लास्ट सिक्स मंथ्स आफ्टर राइटिंग दी मेन्स क्योंकि कुछ और करने को नहीं था तो so, ये था कि चलो शायद इस एग्जाम में पता नहीं होगा नहीं होगा सो आई यूज टू थिंक नहीं होगा बट गॉड हैड अदर प्लान सो One thing that always uh, may always makes us fearful of this exam is the intense competition. That out of five lakh, only one thousand sail through, and one thousand of those who find their name in the list, there are only two or three hundred who are satisfied with their rank, who do not give the next uh, prelims. So that is one thing. Second is that we have not seen our progress. Like that, you are reading all the class notes, and you are reading the class after the class. You are following a, following a good schedule, but आपको तीन महीने बाद भी पता नहीं चलेगा कि आपने कितनी स्ट्रॉन्ग फाउंडेशन बिल्ड कर लिया फिर भी आपके पास चीज़ें होंगी जो आपको नहीं लगेंगी बट दैट इज़ हाउ दी प्रोसेस इज सो हमें पता नहीं चल पाता है कि हम अच्छा कर रहे हैं कि नहीं कर रहे हैं तो हमें जनरली हमारा ब्रेन यही कहता है कि नहीं हम तो खराब ही कर रहे हैं और हम मानने भी लगते हैं तो हमें पता नहीं चलता है कि एक्चुअल हमारा हम स्टैंड कहाँ करते हैं तो थर्ड यही चीज़ ट्रांसलेट होती है सेल्फ डाउट में कि हम कर पाएंगे कि नहीं हम इस एग्जाम के लिए बने हैं कि नहीं हमारी पर्सनैलिटी तो ऐसी नहीं है और टॉपर्स तो पता नहीं कैसे होते हैं तो यही लास्ट पॉइंट भी यही है ग्लोरिफिकेशन ऑफ टॉपर्स तो ये ऐसा नहीं है कि टॉपर्स कहीं और से आए हैं या कुछ और उन्होंने अलग करा है क्योंकि मैं जानता हूँ कि सिंस 2019 के उसके पहले से मैं इसी तरह से टॉपर स्टॉक देखता था मैं न्यू डेली तो नहीं आया था सेंटर में बट ऑनलाइन देखता था और तब भी मैं यही सोचता था कि यार इसका तो सही है रैंक फोर्टीन आ गई रैंक ट्वेंटी आ गई रैंक वन आ गई है और ही वुड हैव बीन फ्राम सम अदर प्लानट हो ये वो बट ऐसा नहीं है क्योंकि अब मैं भी यहीं आ गया हूँ तो <laughs> तो इसलिए कुछ तो होगा कि यू ऑल कैन सक्सीड सो ऐसा इट्स नथिंग दैट टॉपर्स आर एक्स्ट्रॉर्डनरी और ये वो तो आई कैन वाउच फॉर दैट क्योंकि अगर इफ आई कैन स्टैंड देन एनी वन ऑफ यू कैन कम हेयर ट्रस्ट मी एक एस्पेक्ट है लो मार्क्स का जैसा आपने भी कहा कि टेस्ट सीरीज के जो क्वेश्चन होते हैं वो इरेलीवेंट हो सकते हैं उसकी वजह से मार्क्स कम आएंगे टेस्ट सीरीज में तो वी शुड भी केयरफुल कि हम टेस्ट सीरीज दे क्यों रहे हैं वी आर नॉट गिविंग टेस्ट सीरीज टू स्कोर हाई मार्क्स इन टेस्ट सीरीज क्योंकि अगर टेस्ट सीरीज में हाई मार्क्स आ गए तो हमने कुछ सीखा नहीं उस टेस्ट से मैंने सबसे ज़्यादा सीखा अपने सेकेंड प्रेलिम्स के बाद जो थर्ड अटैम्प्ट मैंने इम्प्रूवमेंट करे जो मैं आपको यहाँ पे आज दिखा पा रहा हूँ वरना अगर मेरा फर्स्ट या सेकेंड में हो जाता तो मैं इतने ये आप कॉपीज नहीं दिखा पाता मुझे शर्म आती है अपनी फर्स्ट आंसर शीट दिखाने में क्योंकि उसमें ना कोई डेटा है ना कुछ स्ट्रक्चर फ्लो चार्ट ये सब कुछ नहीं है तो आप जब टेस्ट सीरीज में नंबर कम आए पहले ये देखो कि कम क्यों आ रहे हैं कुछ नॉलेज में कमी है और फीडबैक होता ही है हर मेन्स की कॉपी के साथ तो सिट विद द एग्जामिनर सिट विद समवन यू ट्रस्ट योर सीनियर समवन हु हैज़ क्लियर द एग्जाम बिफोर और एनालिसिस बहुत जरूरी है कि कहाँ गलतियाँ हो रही हैं कहाँ पे हम फेल कर रहे हैं कभी कभी हो सकता है कि मार्क्स बिना किसी रीजन के कम आए सो डोंट गेट दिस आर्टेंट मेरे आई रिमेंबर वेन आई स्टार्टेड इन जून ट्वेंटी इन दिसंबर ट्वेंटी आई गेव अ विजन ओपन टेस्ट फॉर प्रेलिम्स एंड आई अटेम्प्टेड इट वॉज इन ऑफलाइन मोड इन लखनऊ आई गेव इट इन माई एट माई होम टाउन and uh, i remember i attempted 48 questions i got 27 right and 21 wrong total score of 
और मैं जब फोर्टी एट अटैम्प्ट करके आया मुझे लगा इस बार तो नाइन्टी आ रहे हैं इस पेपर में तो कट ऑफ तो चलो अभी दिसंबर में प्रिपेयर हो गया मतलब क्लियर हो गया और जून तक जब तक आएगा तब तक तो हम टॉप करने की तैयारी कर रहे हैं प्रेलिम्स में बट दैट गिव मी रियलिटी चेक अगेन कि जो लो मार्क्स आ रहे हैं उससे ये नहीं कि हमें डिस्करेज होना है कि चालीस नंबर आए अब कट ऑफ तो सौ जाता है तो कैसे क्लियर होगा बट इट इज़ मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट यू लुक कि कहाँ गलती हो रही है मैंने केवल दो सब्जेक्ट पढ़े थे तब तक पॉलिटी और इकॉनमी तो उसके बेसिस पे मैंने क्वेश्चन अटैम्प्ट किए उनको रिवाइज़ नहीं किया था कभी भी इस एंगल से नहीं पढ़ा था कि प्रेलिम्स के क्वेश्चन कैसे आंसर करूँगा तो वो सब कोर्स करेक्शन वहाँ पर किया तो इस प्रिपरेशन में आइट्रेशन मतलब सब चीज़ें आइट्रेटिवली होंगी एक बार में सारे परफेक्ट आंसर आप नहीं लिखोगे कई बार करना पड़ेगा और कोर्स करेक्शन बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है ऑलवेज ट्राई टू गेट कि अभी मैं कहाँ स्टैंड करता हूँ तो वो असेसमेंट करते रहना हमेशा ज़रूरी है तो ये लो मार्क्स मेंटल हेल्थ खराब कर सकता है लेकिन अगर आप एनालिटिकल हो अगर आप देख रहे हो कि क्यों हो रहा है ऐसा तो यू कैन सस्टेन थ्रू दैट नाउ हाउ टू मेंटेन गुड मेंटल हेल्थ तो ये ये मेरा अपना भी है कुछ कुछ जो मैंने आसपास से लोगों से सीखा है या वट आई थॉट आई यूज तो वो मैंने यहाँ पे इंक्लूड किया है फर्स्ट इज कि सेल्फ बिलीव जैसे हमें लगता है कि हम कर पाएंगे कि नहीं कर पाएंगे सेल्फ डाउट होता है तो वी हैव टू ऑलवेज बी श्योर कि अगर हमने ये प्रिपरेशन स्टार्ट करी है देन वी हैव इट इन अस टू क्लियर दिस एग्जाम और ट्रस्ट मी ऐसा कोई अलग से कुछ नहीं होता है कि ये एस्पिरेंट ऐसा है कि वो कर पाएगा या ये नहीं कर पाएगा मैं आपसे वही कह रहा हूँ अगर मैं कर सकता हूँ क्योंकि सेकेंड प्रेलिम्स के बाद Uh, मुझे नहीं लगता था कि मैं कर पाऊंगा बट इफ आई कैन स्टैंड हेयर देन एनी वन ऑफ यू कैन बी हेयर तो सेल्फ डाउट तो अपने मन से हटा दीजिए इट इज यू हैव टू बिलीव इन योर सेल्फ दैट आई हैव दी एबिलिटी टू क्लियर और यही है बैकग्राउंड वाली चीज़ कि uh, ये इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं है देर आर पीपल फ्रॉम ऑल बैकग्राउंड एंड इवन फ्रॉम गुड बैकग्राउंड हु डो नॉट क्लियर इन देयर इनिशियल अटैम्प्ट तो ये एग्जाम आपसे हार्डवर्क यहीं पर कराएगा नो no मैटर आपने पहले क्या करके आए हो अगर आप इसका हार्डवर्क यहाँ करने को तैयार हो then uh, you will sail through so that is their second point ki be ready to work hard and don't shy away from working hard don't shy away from giving those extra 10 minutes in the night to revise for tomorrow's class aur ye revision jo aapne bataya bahut achhi cheez hai ki aap jab class ke pehle revise karke jate ho ya class ke baad revise karte ho wo cheeze bahut time tak aapke sath stay karti hain nothing can match that uh, point of revision wo golden time hota hai mere khayal se ki aap jab class ke baad hi revise kar lo us cheez ko मैं कोशिश करता था कि आफ्टर एवरी क्लास जो ऑनलाइन में कर रहा हूँ उसके बाद ट्राई टू रिवाइज दोज नोट्स ये मैंने जेई के टाइम पे भी किया था तो उससे भी बहुत हेल्प हुई थी उस समय तो एक तो ये फिफ्थ पॉइंट भी हो गया इवन आई नो फेजेस फिर देर आर समथिंग दैट यू हैव टू ट्रस्ट यू कांट से कि मैंने हार्डवर्क किया मुझे तुरंत रिजल्ट मिल जाना चाहिए क्योंकि सेकेंड अटैम्प्ट के बाद मैं यही सोचता था कि वाई मी वाई बिकॉज आई हैव गिवन ऑलमोस्ट टू और थ्री ईयर्स ऑफ माई ऑफ माई प्रोडक्टिव ईयर्स और मैं तो मैंने इतना मेहनत करी इतने टेस्ट दिए थे तो मैं क्यों फेल हो सकता हूँ इस एग्जाम में तो ऐसा नहीं है हो सकता है आपने जो पहले हार्ड वर्क किया उसका रिजल्ट इज जस्ट वेटिंग टू अराइव सो यू हैव टू कीप कीप परसिस्टिंग एंड सोनर और लेटर यू विल गेट दी रिवॉर्ड सो यू हैव टू ट्रस्ट इन दी प्रोसेस ट्रस्ट इन द यूनिवर्स दैट सम हाउ सोनर और लेटर यू विल बी रिवॉर्डेड ये प्रिपरेशन आइसोलेटेड एनवायरमेंट में भी नहीं हो सकती है यू कैन थिंक कि मैं अकेले रूम में मतलब मेरा ये मानना है कि आप अकेले रह के कर सकते हैं क्योंकि ये बहुत ग्रोवेलिंग प्रोसेस है वो मैं नहीं डिनाई करूँगा देर वुड बी फेजेज लो फेजेज एंड यू वुड नॉट हैव वेरी गुड व्यूज़ अबाउट योर सेल्फ और ये सब तो यू यू नीड अ सपोर्ट सिस्टम अराउंड यू फ्रेंड्स हु आर नॉट अपियरिंग इन यू पी एस सी फ्राम और योर पेरेंट्स हु कैन मोटिवेट यू हु बिलीव इन यू टू ऑलवेज कीप यू मोटिवेटेड कि आपको uh, आगे कंटिन्यू करना है इस जर्नी में देन देर इज़ ऑल्सो अ रोल ऑफ लक आई कैन नॉट क्लेम कि जो भी आज वट एवर मार्कशीट आई वॉज शोइंग यू कि आई डिजर्व दैट और मतलब ये तो मैंने अपना ही हार्ड वर्क करा था इसलिए मुझे मिलना चाहिए ऐसा नहीं है आई हैव टू बी आई विल बी ऑनेस्ट बिफोर यू कि इसमें लक का भी फैक्टर है और uh, सभी स्टेज पर प्रेलिम्स मेन्स इंटरव्यू में कि हार्डवर्क uh, काफ़ी लोग करते हैं मतलब मैंने भी देखा है क्लोज फ्रेंड्स हु हैव वर्क वेरी हार्ड बट सम हाउ कुछ ना कुछ मे बी द गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी इज़ वेटिंग फॉर दैम नेक्स्ट ईयर तो इसलिए लक का फैक्टर है इस एग्ज़ाम में जो कि कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्ज़ाम है और ऐसा नहीं है कि केवल हंड्रेड ही लोग या इतने ही लोग डिजर्विंग हैं देर आर अदर पीपल एज वेल बट वॉट विल बी डू अच्छी बात यह है लक लक के साथ कि वी कैन नॉट कंट्रोल इट तो आपको उसको चिंता करने की भी ज़रूरत नहीं है आप ना गुड लक ला सकते कंट्रोल ना चिंता करके ना बैड लक ला सकते तो इसलिए जो आपके हाथ
कुछ पी वाई क्यू उसकी थीम्स बना के जहाँ भी आपको लगता है टॉपर्स कॉपीज़ को और एनालाइज करके क्लास के बाद रिवाइज करके इन सब चीज़ों से आप अपना तो कंट्रोल कर सकते हो ना अपनी एक्यूरेसी बढ़ा के प्रेलम्स के बाद प्रेलम्स के एग्जाम में ज़्यादा रिविजन्स करके तो इन चीज़ों को आप कंट्रोल करिए लक क्योंकि आप कंट्रोल नहीं कर सकते तो फॉरगेट अबाउट इट जब अच्छा होगा तब एग्ज़ाम क्लियर करेंगे ऐसा नहीं है कि पहली बार में हो जाएगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल शुभम हेयर ये हेज क्लियर द एग्जाम इन फर्स्ट फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट सो देर विल बी पीपल हु हैव क्लियर इट इन इनिशियल वुड बी इन द सेकंड और थर्ड वुड हैव बीन फॉर्चुनेट वुड हैव बीन सक्सेसफुल इन द लास्ट अटैम्प्ट सो वी कैन गारंटी द टाइमिंग ऑफ सक्सेस इफ यू हैव डन हार्ड वर्क आई एम श्योर यू विल गेट इट सूनर और लेटर ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट इन इम्प्रूविंग मेंटल हेल्थ इज योर हॉबी और सेकेंड है कि इंटरव्यू के पहले भी मेंटल हेल्थ अच्छी रहेगी क्योंकि हॉबी के बारे में ज़्यादा सोचना नहीं पड़ेगा अगर एक इफ़ यू हैव इनकल्केटेड अ गुड हॉबी तो क्योंकि हॉबी रिफ्रेश योर माइंड ये क्योंकि दो साल भी लग सकते हैं इस प्रिपरेशन में तीन साल तो ऐसा नहीं है कि आपको बारह घंटे पंद्रह घंटे केवल पढ़ते ही रहना है इट्स uh, जो भी आपका टाइमिंग है उससे पढ़िए थोड़ा बहुत आधे एक घंटा माइंड को फ्रेश रखिए क्योंकि जब भी आप पढ़ रहे हैं ट्रीट इट लाइक यूर टॉकिंग टू योर गुड फ्रेंड और ट्रीट इट लाइक वर्शिप क्योंकि आपको खुश होकर करना है प्रिपरेशन ऐसा नहीं है कि आप एकदम परेशान होकर पढ़ते जा रहे हैं तीन महीने तक उससे यू वोट भी एबल टू एब्जॉर्व द कंटेंट इन अ गुड वे और ये सब जो जैसे मैप्स वगैरह मैंने बनाया या एटलस में कुछ मार्क किया तो वो जब आप खुश नहीं होगे तब आप नहीं कर पाओगे यू वुड सी एज सी इट एज अ बर्डन कि ठीक है मैंने आज दो चीज़ें मार्क कर दी बस लेट्स स्किप तो वो चीज़ें तभी आएंगी वैन यू आर हैप्पी वैन यू आर रियली इन्वॉल्व विद दी प्रिपरेशन सो हॉबी से आपका माइंड फ्रेश होगा एंड देन कम बैक टू दी प्रिपरेशन विद अ गुड प्लेजेंट डिस्पोजिशन तो मैंने चीज़ें क्लियर कवर कर ली हैं थर्ड अटैम्प्ट वर्सेज फर्स्ट अटैम्प्ट में मेजर डिफरेंस जो था वो इट वाज अबाउट एटीट्यूड कि मेंस में था पहले कि चलता है जो हमने कर दिया वो बहुत है सेकंड मेंस में ये था कि नहीं अब हमें इस बार सब कुछ करके जाना कुछ छोड़ना नहीं है तो जितनी भी स्ट्रैटेजी सजेस्ट करी लोगों ने टॉपर्स कॉपीज़ ये स्ट्रक्चर ये वो सारा करके एक बार में वी हैव टू डू इट बिफोर दी मेन्स तो एक वो इंटेंट होनी चाहिए जैसे क्रिकेटर्स कहते हैं कि आर टीम डिड नॉट हैव दैट इंटेंट कि एक एक्स्ट्रा रन सेव करने के लिए डाइव करना पड़ता है अब फील्डर ने डाइव नहीं करी तो एक वी कैन लूज द मैच तो इसलिए वो एक इंटेंट होनी चाहिए हार्ड वर्क डज नॉट गो अनरिबॉर्डेड दैट आई एव ऑलरेडी सेड अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स एंड एवरी थिंग हैपन्स फॉर अ रीज़न सो मैन यू ट्रस्ट इन द यूनिवर्स ट्रस्ट मी दैट इफ इवन इफ यू हैव बीन अनसक्सेसफुल यू विल लर्न मोर इन दी नेक्स्ट अटैम्प्ट सो डोंट टेक दैट फेलियर एज समथिंग विच हैज नेगेटिव हैपन नेगेटिवली इन योर लाइफ बिकॉज सी फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई हैव सिक्योर द रिजल्ट केम आउट दिस ईयर ऑन ट्वेंटी थर्ड में आई सिक्योर द रैंक एंड सिंस देन माई लर्निंग प्रोसेस इज स्टॉप्ड From 23rd May till today, 4th June, I have learned nothing new. But when the first uh, result came after first attempt, in the next 10 days, I am sure I would have learned more, much more and more than today. So, आपकी learning तो तभी होगी जब कोई आपको कहेगा कि आपको ये नहीं आता है. किसी ने आपकी तारीफ कर दी है, किसी ने कह दिया आप तो topper हो, या result अच्छा आ गया. उसके बाद you stop improving. So now I have to keep myself much more motivated towards reading the newspaper. But reading newspaper is not just important for UPSC; it is also important to be aware in life. तो आई कैन सी दैट थिंग कि जब आप अगर आप प्रेलेम्स मेन्स किसी भी स्टेज पे अनसक्सेसफुल हुए हो ये आपके लिए गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी है टू इम्प्रूव योर सेल्फ जब आप अपने आप को इम्प्रूव करोगे ऑटोमेटिकली आप ये एग्जाम क्रैक करोगे अगर एग्जाम नहीं क्लियर करते हो तो जहाँ भी आप जाओगे यू विल बी मच बेटर देन योर कॉम्पिटिशन सो ट्रीट एवरी फेलियर और एवरी अनसक्सेसफुल अटैम्प्ट एज अ वेरी गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी नाउ दिस इज द लास्ट वन सो आई विल नॉट बोर यू फर्दर बट दिस इज द लास्ट लाइफ so whenever if you find yourself lost any time in the uh, preparation journey so these are the nine aspects that i would like you to remember it is the three cross three thing which i uh, just made up uh, yesterday so it is not something ki kahin uh, kahin likha hua tha ya kuch tha but i thought ki agar summarize karna hai sab kuch to pehli cheez to hai ki how to keep yourself motivated ye jo hum log ya mental health wali cheez to that is the first point कि यू शुड हैव सेल्फ बिलीफ यू शुड बी विलिंग टू वर्क हार्ड क्योंकि जब आप हार्ड वर्क करते हो और उसके बाद थोड़ा सा भी इम्प्रूवमेंट मिलता है तो एक बहुत पॉजिटिव वाइब आती है अपने बारे में एक पॉजिटिव एनर्जी क्रिएट होती है उससे आप फिर वो वर्चुअल साइकिल क्रिएट हो जाती है फिर आप और हार्ड वर्क करोगे और मोटिवेटेड रहोगे फिर सेकेंड इज़ कि इट इज़ इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट अगर आप कुछ भी ना कर रहे हो वैन यू आर लॉस्ट कि आज आज क्या पढ़ना है क्या करना है ऑलवेज डू दीज थ्री थिंग्स रिविजन रिविजन ऑफ ऑल दैट यू हैव स्टडीड सो फार रिविजन ऑफ जो भी जैसे क्लास में हो रहा है इफ़ यू आर ट्राइंग टू गिव मिनी टेस्ट या ऐसे कुछ तो दो तीन महीने अगर क्लास चल
प्रैक्टिस इज समथिंग कि जैसे मेंस की आंसर राइटिंग है इसमें आप क्या कर सकते हो जैसे मैं ये करता था कि अच्छा ठीक है सो so, uh, अच्छा तो जैसे कि आपका मेंस uh, की जब आपको आंसर राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस करनी है तो उस समय एक तो हो गया कि हम पूरे आंसर्स लिख रहे हैं सेवन मिनट्स से इलेवन मिनट्स में टेन मार्क का फिफ्टीन मार्क का तो वो तो एक एस्पेक्ट है अब जब आ, एक बार आपकी आंसर राइटिंग की फील आ रही है आपको कि हाँ ठीक है मैं आंसर तो लिख ले रहा हूँ अब मुझे प्रैक्टिस करना है कि मैं और क्या क्या क्वेश्चन पर अपना ब्रेन टेस्ट करना है तो जैसे प्रेलिम से हम करते हैं कि बहुत सारे टेस्ट सॉल्व करते हैं तो वैसे हमें मेन्स में भी करना है पर इतना टाइम नहीं है कि हम सारे टेस्ट पूरे लिख के सॉल्व करें तो आप टेस्ट सीरीज उठाओ कहीं की भी उठाओ जहाँ जिस ऑनलाइन जो भी कोचिंग मिले जो मिले और लुक एट दी क्वेश्चन उसमें क्वेश्चन पेपर में यू हैव क्वेश्चन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू क्वेश्चन देखो और उसके बाद अपना स्ट्रक्चर बनाना शुरू कर दो कि अगर मैं इंट्रो लिखता और ये ध्यान रखो कि यू हैव अबाउट थर्टी सेकेंड्स टू फोर्टी फाइव सेकेंड्स टू मेक दिस एंटायर टू डू दिस एंटायर एक्सरसाइज ठीक है अब इसमें आपको कुछ इंट्रो पे लाइन लिखनी है कुछ फैक्ट रिकॉल करना है कि जैसे कोई भी इकोनॉमी uh, का क्वेश्चन है एग्रीकल्चर पे तो इतना ही लिख दो कि एग्रीकल्चर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट सिक्सटीन परसेंट टू जी डी पी एंड एम्प्लॉयज फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट ऑफ वर्क फोर्स इतना फैक्ट तो सभी को पता होता है तो इस तरह का कुछ आपने एक फैक्ट लिख दिया या पी डी एस पे है तो उसका कुछ लिख दिया फिर आप उसका अगर सब पार्ट होता तो उसमें क्या क्या पॉइंट्स लिखते फिर मतलब बेसिकली आपको एक थर्टी सेकेंड्स में एक ब्रेन स्टॉर्मिंग करनी है एक स्ट्रक्चर uh, बना के कि हाँ मैं इतने पार्ट में ये लिखता ये पॉइंट लिखता अगर नेक्स्ट पेज है इसका जो कि होगा ही क्योंकि दो पेज के आंसर होते हैं तो इसमें आप यहाँ पे अपने अगले पाँच छः पॉइंट लिख दो कि अगर प्रोज एंड कॉन्स कुछ पूछे तो उसके यहाँ पे कि मैं ये ये पॉइंट्स लिखता एक एक वर्ड में उसके पॉइंट्स लिख दो और फिर uh, यहाँ पर फाइनली कॉन्क्लूजन इस तरह से तो इससे ये होगा कि आपके ब्रेन में स्ट्रक्चर बनता चला जाएगा जैसे आपने क्वेश्चन देखा मुझे यहाँ पे ये ये लिखना है और कंक्लूड फाइनली ऐसे करना है तो आपकी प्रैक्टिस इससे बहुत अच्छी हो जाएगी उन टॉपिक्स की भी जो आपने नहीं पढ़े क्योंकि मेंस में ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इस साल मुझे याद है एक इस साल तो कई सारे क्वेश्चंस ऐसे थे जो मैंने एटलीस्ट नहीं पढ़े थे काफ़ी टॉपिक्स और एक ठीक है उसमें जो भी टॉपिक्स थे मतलब वो पढ़े ही नहीं थे तो मैं क्या ही बोलूँ उसमें बट अगर इस तरह की आपने प्रैक्टिस कर रखी है तो आप कुछ तो लिख ही पाओगे उसमें कि ये इसके प्रोज होते हैं ये कौन से होते हैं कुछ जनरल बना के एक आधा डेढ़ मार्क कुछ तो देगा एक मार्क से अब रैंक बहुत ज़्यादा चेंज हो जाती है इतना कंपटीशन है तो इसलिए इस तरह के स्ट्रक्चर्स बनाना बहुत ज़रूरी है इससे प्रैक्टिस होगी आपका ब्रेन यूज टू होगा नए क्वेश्चंस को फेस करने के लिए तो ये प्रेलिम्स में आप टेस्ट सीरीज सॉल्व टेस्ट पेपर सॉल्व करो और मेन्स की टेस्ट सीरीज आप इस तरह से सॉल्व कर सकते हो तो ये हो गया आपका प्रैक्टिस वाला पार्ट और सिमुलेशन है कि उसकी जो आपकी थ्री आर के टेस्ट हैं वो आप जितने ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लिखो मैंने प्रेलिम्स और मेन्स के बीच में एटीन जी के टेस्ट दिए थे बट uh, अभी तो ठीक है आपके लिए वो रेलिवेंट नहीं अभी आप प्रेलिम्स के लिए पढ़िए एंड uh, जितने भी टेस्ट आप दे सकें थ्री आवर्स वाले मोड में ही दीजिए क्योंकि उससे ही एक्चुअल प्रैक्टिस होती है कि आपको सेवन मिनट्स इलेवन मिनट्स वाली और उतने टाइम में आप बना पा रहे हो स्ट्रक्चर मतलब पूरा आंसर लिख पा रहे हो कि नहीं लिख पा रहे तो वो इम्पॉर्टेंट है और कभी ये लगे कि मेरी प्रिपरेशन सही हो रही है कि नहीं हो रही है या अब मैं ये पढ़ रहा हूँ वो रेलिवेंट है कि नहीं तो उसके लिए आप ये थर्ड पॉइंट यूज़ करो कि सिलेबस क्या है एग्जाम का मेन्स का काफ़ी डिटेल दिया है तो उसमें से देखो कि ये सिलेबस में ये चीज़ है भी कि नहीं पी वाई क्यूज को पढ़ते रहो हमेशा कि पहले कभी पूछा है कि नहीं पूछा अगर पूछा है तो थीम बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है और तीसरी है टेस्ट सीरीज टेस्ट सीरीज से भी एक रफ आइडिया लगता रहता है उतनी ऑथेंटिक नहीं है टेस्ट सीरीज आई अंडरस्टैंड कि सिलेबस और पी वाई क्यूज तो यू ने दिए हैं टेस्ट सीरीज एक कोचिंग्स का एक परसेप्शन है एक एक्सपीरियंस फैकल्टीज का परसेप्शन है कि ये चीज़ें पूछी जा सकती हैं तो टेक इट लाइक दैट कि ठीक है अगर मार्केट में ये परसेप्शन है तो सभी एस्पिरेंट्स उसी को एक्सपोज है ना तो आप भी उतने लेवल तक तो पहुंच ही जाओ और उसके बेसिस पे आप देख लो अगर टेस्ट में कोई चीज़ पूछी जा रही है देन इट इज़ फेयरली इंपॉर्टेंट एटलीस्ट इट इज़ कंसिडर्ड इंपॉर्टेंट तो आपको आनी चाहिए वो चीज़ तो इन एस्पेक्ट से आप ये इंश्योर कर सकते हो कि कभी आप ऑफ ट्रैक ना जाओ अगर आपकी प्रिपरेशन uh, सही जा रही है कि नहीं यू कैन यूज दिस सो थैंक यू एवरी फॉर अ वेरी पेशेंट हेयरिंग एंड आई नो दैट आई हैव ट्रबल्ड यू फॉर ऑलमोस्ट Uh, a very long time and this is my telegram channel uh, you can if you want you can join this mostly uh, for gs i have already uploaded my answer copies and stuff i am also uh, plan i am also answering doubts whatever you have so i can answer those on the if you can post it on the telegram 
पोस्ट एंड बाकी मैथ्स ऑप्शनल है मेरा सो आई आई एम फोकसिंग ऑल्सो ऑन दैट सो दिस इज ऑल दैट आई हैड फॉर टूडे थैंक यू या यू कैन स्टार्ट सर माय क्वेश्चन इज टू मिस्टर शुभम आई वांट टू बी एन आई एफ एस बट आई वांट टू नो दैट व्हाट मेक्स यू टू चूज आई एफ एस ही हैज आल्सो चूजन आई एफ एस इज फर्स्ट प्रेफरेंस सो लाइक बोथ कैन आंसर so what made me choose ifs was that i always had an interest in ir and foreign policy the next thing was that i analyzed the like lifestyle of ias i did a research this is where i went to the net and uh, read about how the lifestyle of ias is and how the lifestyle lifestyle of ifs is but no offense to anyone but i thought i find out, found out that the lifestyle of ias is very boring compared to ifs so i went for the exciting stuff also i thought that as india is growing in the future ifs would be very challenging and exciting job so i went for the excitement part he can uh, also answer the same i would like to add that uh, for me it was the opportunity to uh, represent india at the international stage so uh, in class 10th i remember in our history class uh, history subject we learned about uh, un Uh, the organization called as UN, and that every country sends its representative. And I remember there was a photograph where the representative of India sat, and in front of uh, him or her there is a uh, a small board that reads India, and behind uh, her there is a, a flag of India. So that was what uh, got me thinking that I want uh, this job. That no matter what I do in future, I want to represent India, to have that label of India in front of me. So I think uh, that was what uh, IFS offers, and that attracted me. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, my question is for Manan, sir. Uh, since your optional is mathematics, uh, so how did you revise your optional throughout the year? Because in maths, it happens that once you read a subject, and for five six months you are reading, uh, like like for example, if you start with modern algebra, and uh, for five six months after completing uh, modern algebra, you study different uh, different parts, and after five six months when you again come to modern algebra, it's almost feel like out of touch and. Uh, you know it seems like uh, uh new uh, again reading same thing so how did you revise that uh, option uh, it is very important that uh, you keep on revising your math syllabus it is uh, quite large as well as the importance of recalling formula is very important uh, to solve the questions in time so uh, my strategy was that in the first attempt i had completed the syllabus of maths by around uh, march or april of 2020 then came the news that prelims was postponed till october so in july and august i made sure that i gave uh, around four or five tests of paper 1 and paper 2 each so when i gave the test i used to give myself three or four days time to revise uh, the maths uh, syllabus and then prepare for the test so by the way i would be sharing the detailed strat- strategy day after tomorrow there is a talk at ims uh, and also on my telegram channel there are strategies but my basic idea was to give as many tests so now when you give a test there is a motivation to prepare for that test and as shubham was saying that he followed the entire year long schedule so this is relevant for all subjects when you give a when you schedule a test in the days leading up to the test you would be preparing very diligently for that test it would be kind of excitement that uh, i am giving a test so you revise for that now during the test again your brain is working to analyze the part which i you uh, which you have studied so it would uh, crunch those numbers and uh, all the content that you have read so du- during the test also you are uh, improving your recall ability and after the test analyzing the mistakes that you have done you would again uh, improve so giving tests is a very important way to revise the syllabus uh, regarding modern algebra as you said it is indeed a very difficult uh, topic of the syllabus so my approach was to uh, initially start with the revising the basic formulae and definitions and solving only the basic questions from the two books of r kumar and uh, later on only i when i was fairly confident then i went into the tougher questions that are 15 marker or 20 marker however in this attempt also i uh, did not attempt any uh, optional question from modern algebra it was only the basic questions in the compulsory section uh, and i could easily attempt the other parts so that was my approach sir my question is that how to prepare for essay specifically uh, so 
what i did was i followed a lot of toppers who have scored very good marks in the essay for example vikram grewal sir i read his like blog and read his essay and based on that i prepared my own strategy uh, before i went to go to the strategy uh, one thing that i would like to say is that originality is being rewarded in the essay so you have to be the original you don't copy what the toppers have said i tried to copy what the toppers have done i followed a set pattern like vertical dimension horizontal dimension i got just average or above average marks 170 is above average basically so make bring your own originality for preparation what i did was i made a separate sheet of quotes anecdotes that i would like to bring in the papers i i like i tried practicing those anecdotes as well as some methods of writing essay in the test for example uh, starting with an anecdote and finishing with the same anecdote how to make various dimensions or how to connect all the uh, all the paragraphs how to make it more coherent so preparation was not extensive as gs or what i just went with the uh, went with the natural flow i went with the originality with some added aspects from the various toppers uh, as i said the horizontal dimension vertical dimension but i would request you to bring your own originality to the essay paper i would uh, just like to add that uh, you can also do practice of essay topics although um, see what happens as i suggested for gs uh, mains uh, test series similarly you can pick up different topics of essay test series also from different coachings and like you do in the first 20 minutes uh, the of the entire 90 minutes you just make a framework of what you are going to write similarly uh, you can make that 20 minute framework for multiple topics and this will uh, help you analyze and connect the dots in your head better and even when you face a new topic in the exam most of the examples uh, that you have already read uh, they would come to your mind very easily uh, when you are facing a new topic so that can be one way but i agree that originality is uh, very important and that is i think being rewarded my uh, question is for both of you uh so uh, my question is uh, what was your schedule or revision pattern just one month before prelims i just gave lot of test whatever free test i could find i gave test of almost every coaching institute a well, lot of time are free uh, just give one or two simulation test so i used to give test uh, revise in the afternoon uh, do the analysis of the test add in the my notes something which i have missed or something new that i learned so there is no no fixed pattern uh, if i give a small anecdote uh, that time at the time of prelims few month before prelims ipl used to happen right in the prelim my i i used to like give 3 hours for the ipl and do the rest of the stuff in other time so there was no fixed schedule but just prepare give test revise and analyze the test manan would say some i would uh, just add that in the last month month before the prelims so you can divide it into two parts first is the uh, up to 10 days leading the prelims so in those final 10 days you can stick to just revision of what you have already studied and uh, going through your short notes and the tests which you have already attempted you would have definitely marked some important questions or you wrote something so you can revise those tests in the final 10 days and the 20 days before those 10 days you can go at a high uh, intensity for writing tests you can even write uh, one test daily and uh, analyze that test uh, for example 2 hours or maybe 90 minutes for writing the test if you are not filling the omr and you can analyze and go through the solutions in another 2 hours so you can make that 4 hour investment no thank you uh, in the 20 days before so that would help you as uh, shubham was saying that uh, give more practice uh, take more practice for the test so you can do high intensity practice there congratulations to both of you sir uh, sir my question is to manan sir uh, what might had your next uh, plan or strategy if you were not been selected or do you had plan b even when the result came i was uh, studying for prelims so i would have given the fourth attempt as well because uh, the thing that motivated me was that i had reached the interview stage in the first attempt and again going to till the interview in the third attempt so no matter what the result would have been i have given two interviews in third attempt so in three attempts so i was confident that i have to make some incremental improvement and 
I might clear it in fourth, fifth, whatever attempt it takes. So that would have been. Sir, is it necessary to make the notes on every topic of the syllabus of mains? For if I I would say yes, because I did that. Some toppers might not have done that, but I would. For me, what I felt was if I made my own notes, it would get imprinted in my memory. So that recall factor was there. I would recall very easily if I had my own notes of every single topic. But again, be smart. You don't have to make notes of Lakshmi Kant because it's a note itself. You don't have to make notes of say, or economic book that you are reading. If the if that that is in the note format, don't waste your time on that. Also, it will depend on. How much time that you have? I had a lot of free time, so I I made my own notes. Okay, sir. First of all, congratulations, sir, to both of you. Sir, I want to ask Shubham, sir, that how was your strategy towards optional, since my optional is geography. So I think uh, you would have to like attend another session for that, uh, because it would be very long session. I won't be like describing my strategy again. In few minutes, but uh, I attended a foundation course. Uh, I completed my syllabus by June, uh, January 2022. Then gave few tests before the prelims. I made my own notes of everything, and after the prelims, I just revised, gave test, did value addition. This was the basic strategy. But they would upload a lot of other coaching that I did. They would upload the whole strategy video. I would also write write somewhere. Uh, all my strategy is here. My notes and the answer test. So wait for that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Congratulations, both of you. Sir, what was your first reaction after result? Yeah, the media wala question pushne lage. Kya hi ho, khushi ho ga. Uske alawa to kuch ho nahi sakta. Obvious question hai yaar ye. Special. Kya? Special. Kya special ho? Like. It would be happiness, right? Nothing more than that. Nothing less than that. Also, relief for me. It was also relief that I won't be giving test on 28. Since I was back at my home in Madhubani, I had my train. I had my center for prelims was in Delhi, so I had booked my train ticket of 25, 25th of uh, May. So it was a relief cancelling all the tickets and all. So it, apart from that, it was also apart from happiness, it was also relief. So second question is your how to choose optional. Uh, again, very vague question, but uh, for me, it is a ratio of seventy percent interest and thirty percent strategy. Strategy about which optional is more scoring, which optional is taking less time, which optional is complementing other GS papers. So for me, I had interest in geography. That's why I took geography. So if you are interested in a particular subject, to take that as a option. Even Manan was. A, Interested in maths? That's why he took maths. You won't be taking anthro just for the sake of it. If a particular optional is not working for you in three or four attempts, you can change the optional. So if I give an example of rank three, Uma Hariti, she had optional of geography for two or three attempts, and then changed the optional to anthropology. So it varies from people to people. Uh, just go with the interest that you have, because interest is very important in the optional. If you just can't go with the strategy uh, or the optional that the topper has taken, because in the last few years, anthro and the PSIR has gained the like cult status that if you want to score more, you take these two. But in all the optional, average is around same because scaling happens, right? Uh, most of you might be knowing, might not be knowing, but scaling happens in the optional where the average of all the optional is somewhat similar. So take anything that interests you. Thank you, sir. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, congratulations to both of you. Uh, sir, I have two questions. First one is, uh, as far as main is concerned, what would be a better option to just uh, look at the question paper uh, questions one by one, all twenty questions first of all, and then to probably mark the questions which are easy for you to attempt first, or probably uh, attempt better, and mark some questions which are d uh, difficult and uh, like probably ignore them to a bit comparatively uh, but would be the better choice or uh, alternatively go from top to bottom and like attempt uh, one after the other 
बिफोर ही शेयर हीज ओन स्ट्रैटी माई माई स्ट्रैटी वॉज दैट आई वुड अटैम्प द फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन बिकॉज फर्स्ट इम्प्रेशन इज द लास्ट इम्प्रेशन सो आई वुड अटैम्प द फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन देन गो टू द लास्ट टेन क्वेश्चन बिकॉज दीज आर फिफ्टीन मार्कर्स यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू लिव द फिफ्टीन मार्कर्स बिकॉज द शेयर ऑफ मार्क्स आर हायर सो आई वुड टू डू फर्स्ट टू क्वेश्चन देन लास्ट टेन क्वेश्चन then come to the rest eight questions i did this in the all my papers this was my line of answering uh, my strategy was also similar i would in the first we get the question paper 5 minutes before so if the paper starts from 9 am so that is the time when we start writing but in the exam hall we get the question paper by 855 so you have 5 uh, minutes in the starting where you can read the question paper now it is very important if you to maximize uh, th- that those 5 minutes what i used to do was first of all read the entire question paper in the first uh, 10 questions those 10 markers i used to select five questions in which i was very confident i that i had a uh, good grasp over i used to mark those five questions then uh, regarding then i would just glance through the 15 markers but i would not make any uh, uh, marking there regarding the five 10 markers w- which i had no idea about so i would have roughly 3 3 and a half minutes remaining and these five questions i would just scribble in the question paper itself the points that i can write in those uh, five questions uh, these can be just one word or some uh, short forms or something and uh, now when the t- uh, time starts for writing i would first attempt the five 10 markers which i have marked then i would attempt all the 10 15 markers and i would be attempting the, those five 10 markers which i had less idea in the end now since i have scribbled something in the question paper some short form or i have underlined something in the question paper at the time barely uh, 25 minutes would be there in the end when you would have to write these five questions ideally there should be 35 but we don't live in an ideal world so uh, lastly we would have around 22 25 minutes to write these five questions the the best benefit of having written something in the question paper start in the starting will be visible to you at the end when you have already ready made points which you can just copy in your answer sheet and you can Uh, finish the answer in four or five minutes very easily if you have the points already written in the question paper. So that was one way in which uh, I could complete the paper and also attempt the easier ones in the starting. It would give me confidence to uh, begin with a good uh, flow. Just to add, there is no perfect strategy. Yeah. You can like attempt anything. Perfect exactly. is a myth. It is boring, right? Except for such a straight drive, those are <laughs> perfect. Otherwise, everything is everything. There is no such thing as perfect. Make your own strategy. give the test you will find what works for you right i mean it's quite interesting that both of your first preference is psir and none of you have taken optional as psir but okay. i have my optional as psir and psir i found out that there are certain questions uh, which are based on certain events which are like 4 5 years ago so to that extent i feel very like scary like how can i uh, t- take up or remem- memorize some issues or topics which are mentioned in the news 5 years ago If you know about this issue in PSI or optional, or you have no idea about this, to be honest, I have uh, no idea. Okay, okay, that's Even fine. I am hearing it for the first time, but I think uh, if something in the was in the news four or five years ago and is being asked now, I think it is there for everyone. I mean, just as a general perspective, uh, my view is that it is the the question is difficult for everyone, or the uh, to, to strategize it is difficult for everyone. So maybe you can, uh, but I am not sure. I am not the right person to advise you. So I would. Yes, sir. I already asked you that question, so you uh, have asked me to ask in the last. So we already have this bulky notes, lecture notes. We have vision material, and we have a standard book, and we have a monthly magazine. So now we already have this bulky notes, and we have to add in this. So what to add? Uh, how to make this bulky notes actually? how to make these notes already this is bulky and we have to add also so from where to add what to add no it's not uh, necessary that you have to add it's uh, the idea is that if you come across something new in the test series or in the newspapers which you think is uh, relevant for the notes for example i will give you an example that in 2019 when i did the foundation course uh, at that time the teacher the faculty at vision they taught us something about the uh, pds system or the food corporation of india and all that but as time progressed and my journey into the exam progressed 2020 21 and all so there were some changes for example the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana was introduced regarding the pds so i would just 
in within my class notes i would just make a small subheading on the uh, on wherever i find space regarding this new scheme what are the two or three benefits of this similarly regarding nano urea liquid which was introduced so i did not have this in my class notes but when this scheme was added or this product was introduced i would add this in my class notes so these kind of things you can add this would help because everything would come at a single place now before the exam you would have the headache that i have to revise three or four different sources but if you have everything at one place you that uh, headache reduces so this is how you add but you don't have to add everything there only very crisp and very relevant uh, things have to be added so uh, how did you use uh, vision material uh, the printed material yes sir i hardly used the printed material because i found the uh, classes quite uh, sufficient for what i needed and okay. also i did not have time because I, the very purpose why i was attending the classes was that i can only devote those 3 and 3 or 4 hours for gs studies rest had to be given to the optional so that's why i wanted the videos because i also wanted a break from reading the books from maths if i was also reading books for gs then this would have been a very uh, boring preparation for me so i just wanted to watch the videos make notes and uh, proceed like that so i did not refer to much to the printed material okay sir and sir, can we go ahead with magazine only for the current affairs uh, you mean reading news yeah hello reading newspaper just to read and for uh, memorizing or learning the magazine see uh, when you read the newspaper there are there would definitely be one or two items every day which would be important so it is important that see when once you start the attitude that i will just read it i will not make notes of it it will be more of a casual exercise like reading a fiction book or something so your attention would uh, would wander so if you can make some short notes out of the newspaper every day you have then you have that discipline no i have to read it diligently i have to find out what's important or not so read it read the newspaper paper in that way but the monthly magazine is a very exhaustive uh, coverage and it is like a fall back option even if you miss out a newspaper then things would be covered in the monthly magazine but the context and the understanding would develop only if you read the newspaper regularly so don't uh, miss out on that okay thank you sir so you have to say something no okay thank you sir are we done with the questions uh, it's been a very long session chalo thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone thank you